Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 4, Episode 4. And today we're talking about Leprechaun 4, colon, In Space, from 1996, directed by Brian Trenchard Smith. I'm Joe Lascola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw, and I'm stuck in a time loop. Welcome to the dumpster. To the most beautiful woman in the universe, the Princess Serena, my future wife. Your wife? Your wife? How dare you? Do you know who I am? I am the daughter of a king. And you will one day be a queen. And it is your royal blood, madame, that will make me a king. What? You? A king? <laughs> Laugh if you like me, darling, but I'll have me way. I'm a man amongst men, and it's tired I am of being treated like a dog. From now on, the rest of this miserable universe will bow and scrape before me. And if they don't, off with their heads! <laughs> No joke, when that table appears in the first, like, two minutes, <laughs> like, I was like, no! <laughs> There's no cards on it, though. Not yet, anyway. It doesn't matter. It's the fucking table from the unluckiest leprechaun, or the fuck. <laughs> Literally, it's, like, verbatim. <laughs> it's just the same thing. Where's that violin player? Uh, I couldn't. I was like, oh, God, no. It's just starting over. Serve me up some fire-leaf clovers, would you there, hokey? I guess he just moved on from the starfish or something. I don't even know. Well, I mean, I was going to say, you know, in that same scene, we, we did see him slopping on the table a little bit there, so I don't think the relationship is quite uh, divorced quite yet, let's say. No, he's still got that thing in his pants for sure, yeah. He looks upset the whole time, like he's just going for an aggressive rebound. Uh, <laughs> from the starfish! Yes! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. This is our St. Patrick's Day episode for this year. Everyone, folks at home, and... Uh, uh, you know, this has been a long time coming. Sure has. We did that Luck of the Irish uh, the, the first year, and uh, we kind of faked you out a little bit with uh, uh, the uh, the very unlucky Leprechaun from last year, which is also a Leprechaun movie that stars Warwick Davis, but it doesn't kill anybody, uh, per se. Well, uh, mm. He tries, maybe. Pretty sure he murdered that girl in the <laughs> Dropped a dropped a bunch of rocks on her. Yeah, it's just her. It's just like the the synapses in her brain firing off. So what we're seeing is just the you know the final thoughts of some girl who's been brained by a little goblin. Uh, definitely go back and listen to that episode uh, from last year because we give you the full rundown on the parallel uh, between that and Roger Corman and um, the horror Leprechaun series, which we're talking about today. And you'll understand that first two minutes of banter about a starfish and a table. Uh, it, it'll all come together, because uh, I gotta tell you, it's probably gonna keep coming up. The deep lore. The deep Lubden lore of the MDU. Yeah, an MDU icon. Yeah. I'll, I'll even wager. The beginnings of an icon, yeah. And here we are in his f his fourth foray into the horror <laughs> version of the Leprechaun series. Now his fifth time playing a Leprechaun. Just, just want to reiterate that. <laughs> So we just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the Leprechaun series in general, because you know how you know how we like to do. You know, we pick out one of the uh, lesser talked about or or, or less regarded uh, sequels and kind of talk about the whole series. So Sean and I are a big fan of uh, uh, Leprechaun, the first one. Oh yeah, it's a great flick. I mean, you got Jennifer Aniston in there in her first her first role, and fucking Warwick Davis is just a treasure. I mean, he is literally the pulse in this entire series that makes any of these films watchable, to tell you the truth. Yeah, without him, uh, <laughs> they, these movies would just sink even further and further into the uh, dumpster that they were uh, born out of. If if it weren't for him, I would just kind of take my hands and I would flip them upside down so my thumbs are against my eyeballs, and I would just start pushing until I could feel them press past my eye sockets. Just push some uh, four-leaf clovers in there, you know? There you go, man. <laughs> God, you've pushed out your own eyes. Okay, I've stuffed them with clovers. I'll be fine. <laughs> 
And, you know, there's nothing too crazy about this series to really talk about, you know? Uh, we got Mark Jones, our, our good buddy Mark Jones, the director and writer of Rumpelstiltskin, uh, writing the first movie and directing the first movie. And it turns out, I think I want to edit myself because on that Rumpelstiltskin episode we did in that first season, I, I mentioned that Mark had wrote all of the subsequent Leprechaun films, but that is not true. He didn't write a damn one of them after the first one. Um, it was all char- it, he was credited because of the, the characters that he had written. Because each movie thereafter is written by somebody else. He figured it out. Yeah, that that that's really what happened. He he figured out. Hey, as long as you guys want to keep making these movies and I keep getting these fucking uh, paychecks. Yeah, these checks in the mail. Yeah, make a seventh and eighth one. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll executive produce it, okay. Oh, yeah, dude. He's still catching that fucking Trimark check. Oh, yeah, a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Leprechaun 1, I mean, it, it's it's the classic Leprechaun film. Um, if you're going to watch any of them, definitely fucking watch that one for sure. Uh, and if you're into it, I would say go to, to about the one we're talking about today and then just stop. You don't need any more than that. If you're really curious, you can go check out Leprechaun in the Hood and then Back to the Hood uh, if you really want to because those are the last two films that Warwick portrays the titular Leprechaun in. I mean, at least in the Hood, if you're an Ice T fan, he is a <laughs> uh, one of the main bad guys in the movie. He does battle with Lubden, so uh, <laughs> that might entice you. I don't know. For a golden flute. I'm sure Warwick Davis was like approaching Doug Bradley Hellraiser 5 and 6 levels of I'm fucking done with this shit by Back to the Hood. It had to be the paycheck, right? Or like critical response? Like, I I can't imagine these movies doing well after 4, which we're going to talk about. Or or even 5 because, I mean, you you have Ice-T in that, so like that's your big draw? I question mark, you know? Yeah, no, sure. There might be a dignity thing going on where it's like, I... I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, it could be. I might be putting Ice T on a higher pedestal than most people, just because I I like the guy and and he's usually pretty entertaining in any role that he is in. Yeah, sure. But you're right. Like maybe he's not like you know an A lister per se. He's funny in in the hood for sure. Like he's fine in that. It's just not a great movie. No, sure, sure. So the second film in this series, Leprechaun Two, is the last one to be released theatrically. I blame Clint Howard. <laughs> He was the kiss of death for that, you think? I don't know about that. Yeah, just that cameo on the uh, the Dark Tour. You know, he's only in it for like five minutes. That has uh, sunk the whole ship. When are we going to see the death houses? When are we going to get to Houdini's tree? I want to see the tree. <laughs> it's from Ireland, I heard. Someone shoots down a theatrical one for Leprechaun 3, just cuts to Clint Howard like, oh, jeez. Like, ah. Well, here's the thing, man. God, he's going to kick my ass if he ever hears this show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably. I don't sound like that. <sighs> apparently, you know, obviously it's not, or not obviously, but apparently it's not the same leprechaun in every film, okay? It's a different leprechaun, with, like, which the... Ex- with the exception of In the Hood and Back to the Hood, I think that's like that's sequentially the same uh, leprechaun. Right, because he doesn't actually die at the end of In the Hood. No. He gets that fucking, uh, that, that, that jewel put on him, right? Or some shit? What happens? It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I know he basically, they have like a fake out at the end because of that medallion that uh, traps him, which is kind of a callback to the third film. Uh, they have like this thing in the movie where it flies in the air and it, it surprise lands on his neck in a, in a scene earlier in the film. And then I think it happens again at the end and it's kind of like left ambiguous and then come to find out, nope, it didn't land on him this time and he took over this guy's soul and makes him perform for him at Vegas or something. Not in Vegas. It's like... They also they try to get him to smoke like a joint with like clovers laced in it or something. Well, yeah, I think it's Vegas because I think like one of the subplots is like the main characters that that take his gold or the medallion or some shit are trying to like get into a contest at Las Vegas, like a singing competition, and that's like the payoff, I suppose. No, yeah, they're trying to get a they're trying to get a record deal, Postmaster P or some shit. Right, right. It's a weird like if you thought this movie was weird, folks. Uh... <laughs> The Leprechaun Back in the Hood is pretty fucking weird, too. Oh, no, no, that's just in the hood. Don't get it confused. <laughs> because These names are too goddamn similar. <laughs> in the hood, I, I remember vividly at the end of that, he's, like, rapping at the end, and the credits start rolling. Yes. So he's not dead. I come from the land of the Irish Spring. Dublin's the place where I learned my thing. From the Emerald Isle to your place in the hood. I'm the man of green, come to do no good. Lep in the hood, come to do no good. 
Left in the hood, come to do no good. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> He seems he sings the leprechaun rap, Connor. Come on, you don't know that? I'm just like dis I'm just actually disappointed in everything I'm hearing. Back to the hood, I can't I think I've seen that maybe in its entirety one time. And like I'm pretty sure like a hairdresser somehow comes upon the gold or whatever. No, that's that that's in uh two. That's in two. The hairdresser? Uh yeah, what's uh what's his face from fucking Mad T Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different scene. My bad. Yeah, no, you're good. I'm gonna bring up a dir a different hairdresser by the end of this movie. I feel like he was looming behind the scenes. <laughs> if you go by the structure of this film at all, in the third act featuring a... <clears throat> we'll get there. I kind of want to talk about horror movies deciding it's time to go to space. Uh, yeah, we'll, we're going to get there because... <laughs> it happens three fucking times. <laughs> I want to just talk about a little bit about the other sequels because we talked about Back to the Hood more than I wanted to. Oh, sure. We got we to even it out. But like two two is, is, is a lot of fun because it's like Leprechaun is like imprisoned in a tree from Ireland uh, that's as a gift to Harry Houdini and that's how he gets to the States. You know what I mean? Because, like, in the first movie, he's captured in Ireland and then brought to the States right. um, by Dan O'Grady or whatever and, like, locked in his basement in a fucking crate. But the second one is probably my favorite sequel. There's just something about it that I like. There's a lot of really funny parts, and like Sean said, uh, the dude from Mad TV is in it. He's fucking hilarious in his little scene. There's a drinking competition with a fucking leprechaun. That guy Morty is hilarious. He, yeah, he's the guy. Let's make a callback to a really old MD uh, running joke from season one. The guy who's yelling stop to Austin Powers on the fucking steamroller. Sure is. He, he basically he gets killed the worst way possible in that film. Loved in like turns this espresso machine on him and pours like steam on his face he stabs him in the hand with spoons yeah 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 it's it's pretty it's got some brutal kills in that movie yeah and it's the first movie that introduces this bride dynamic right like oh boy loved in uh <laughs> by the way <laughs> That is like some Wikipedia bullshit. Uh, apparently, it's from a comic I read online because I looked it up again in preparation for this episode. It was one of the comics. He was named Lubden, and I, I guess the internet just decided, well, we'll just we'll put that on every IMDb <laughs> page, every wiki page. <laughs> Fuck it. Because he's never called Lubden or referred to as Lubden in the film series ever. But in case you're wondering what the fuck we're talking about, that's where that stems from. So, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, this is the first time he he wants to have a bride, right? So, you can kind of... It's like Bride of Leprechaun. Leprechaun 2, Bride of Leprechaun or whatever. Sure. And it's a, it's fine. It's a story arc or whatever. And he, like, puts a curse on this family and then, like, comes back a thousand years later and, um, you know, tries to claim the the ancestor of, of, the, of the girls as his bride or whatever. And, you know, you know how that goes. And then 3 is fucking weird because that introduces... Uh, something that gets carried through the next that, that gets carried through uh, to the hood and back to the hood or in the hood and back to the hood see you just did it it's tough I know it's tough man it's, it's stupid just call leprechaun 5 <laughs> That's my pull quote right there. It's stupid. In the hood too. That's it. Done. In the, <laughs> in the hood again. Yeah. But th uh, three introduces that whole thing with the 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 medallion that turns him to stone or some shit. Yeah, it, it's like. Rumpelstiltskin kind of shit, really. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's fine, whatever, but again. Was that a Mark Jones idea? Was he like, hey, this is what you got to do for number three? <laughs> he was the consultant? Like, oh yeah, okay. So this is how we bring it. We brought him back in a fucking tree in the second one. In this one, he's a statue with his pot of gold. He's got his fucking medallion on and shit. Don't take it off, though. Uh, this movie also brings us a uh, lead character who gets bit by Lubden. Mm -hmm. And then some of his green blood gets in the wound and the guy starts turning into a leprechaun. Where leprechaun? <laughs> Where con? Where? Yeah. And he uh he uses those powers to uh stop the leprechaun. And they have this like horrible finish where they like flamethrower his pot of gold because there's this whole like Las Vegas angle. Oh, it's in Vegas, by the way. In case Joe didn't say that already, I didn't. But it's fucking funny. There's a whole bunch of scenes where he's like playing craps and like he makes like money come out of some fucking guy's mouth and shit, like a slot machine. Caroline Williams is in it. By the way, from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Right, yeah, and <laughs> loved it because they have this whole thing where in that movie, uh, 
one of his coins gets taken, and if you hold his coin and you say a wish, it becomes true. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, real quick. So in the second one, if you have, if you're holding one of his coins, you're invulnerable to him. Right, because it's different in every movie. It's never consistent. Yeah. Because uh, they have a scene in two where he's about to get run over by Lubby in a uh, go-kart, you know, call back to the first movie, and uh, he just, like, goes right through him. It's it's really, it looks like shit, but it's like, oh, okay, I guess that would, uh, you understand it pretty easily, I suppose. <laughs> Are you implying that Pirates of the Caribbean ripped off Leprechaun? Yes. <laughs> it's possible. Leprechaun 2, actually. Yeah. Or 3, you know, take your pick. So then, yeah, and then after 3, we get to 4, which we're going to talk about. And then we already talked about In the Hood and Back to the Hood. Now, those, that that's it. Back to the Hood was the last time that Warwick Davis portrayed the Leprechaun. But somehow, some way, we got two more fucking movies. One of them was produced by WWE, and that was Leprechaun Origins <laughs> with Hornswoggle. Okay, like, let me tell everybody something. My opinions on these movies aside, anything produced by the WWE, it's automatically shit. I don't care who made it. I don't care who's in it. Like, that company has not produced a single watchable film in the history of their existence. Hey, man, they did that Halle Berry movie with the kidnapped woman. You know, remember that one? Ah, yes, with superstar David Otunga. Everybody remembers that guy, right? <laughs> Jenna, <laughs> what movie is that? Oh, fuck. It's, I think it's called The Call. Oh, I can't remember the name. It's called The Call, isn't it? Uh, something like that. I never saw it, but it, uh, people liked it, and Halle Berry had a really bad wig on in it. That's all I really know about it. There's also like 13, 12 round sequels, and the most recent one had Dolph Ziggler trying to stop a bomb at a WWE event. So there's WWE wrestlers running around as themselves. But also, Kane is the chief of police. Ugh. I think that's more than I needed to know. Um, Man, and you're telling me that Leprechaun 4 is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to what you just said. Oh, I. you know what? If if you put me in a room with two of them, I think I would probably go with Leprechaun 4. Like... <laughs> See? All right. Well, there you go. Is is there anything of note from that movie, Joe, or is that pretty much sum it up? Okay, I watched it one time because I was curious because it was the first time that we were getting a Leprechaun movie that went, that didn't have Warwick in it, which was strange to me. What's weird about the film, from what I remember, is that it takes itself super seriously. Like, it's a really serious horror movie but it's written like shit and it just it's just bad. You got a leprechaun that you don't see for most of the movie. There there's it's it it acts more like a chupacabra than a fucking leprechaun. Like he's not like, "Oh, you're trying to steal me gold" and shit like that, you know? Th- there's none of that. The weird thing is that the like if you're a WWE fan, you watch their TV programming. For a while, they were promoting this featuring superstar Hornswoggle. It's like, but no, it, it really didn't because they barely show the, th- the what he's supposed to be playing and it's filmed in the dark and it's, you can only see its face. Yeah, barely though. I thought it was all CG. I mean, was Hornswoggle in a fucking costume? I don't know. Because they stopped talking about it like as soon as the movie came out. <laughs> I expected him to be, like, in full regalia, like like Warwick, but it wasn't like that at all. It was like a ghost shark situation where it was, like, the actual model looked way better until they put effects over it, maybe? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> for those who hear the word hornswoggle and go, what the fuck are you on about? He is a little person performer for the WWE who was uh, Fit Finley's son slash crony slash underling, and he came to the ring dressed as a leprechaun. Because short people are funny, aren't they, Vince McMahon? And, and then they made the movie with him because, fuck it, it's just a natural transition, right? Yeah. I, I mean, hey, more power to that guy, right? <laughs> fuck it. Question mark, because he's not in the fucking movie barely, and he doesn't, there's no, th- th- again, like, the leprechaun doesn't talk. It's not like a funny thing. It's like, again, it runs around like a fucking little animal and, like, runs all over the place. It's stupid. That means Kane has more spoken lines in See No Evil than Hornswoggle does in the movie Leprechaun Origins. Correct, because he has precisely zero. <laughs> um, so you got to tell me about this new one. Okay, so Leprechaun Returns, right? That It's a direct sequel to the first film. Now, uh, Steve Kostansky, who did, uh, you know, Psycho Gorman and The Void and, and uh, Manborg and all that, he directs this film for Lionsgate and Sci-Fi Original. And guess what this movie feels like? A sci-fi original. A sci-fi motherfucking original. Which means it feels like Titanic 2. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's got higher production value than 
Titanic 2 for sure. Okay, but yeah, but like, my Windows Movie Maker edits from 15 years ago have higher production value than Titanic 2. The, uh, <laughs> so that, so Leprechaun Returns comes out in 2018, and I just, mi- I never caught the ride on it, right? I was like, oh, that looks fucking whatever, you know, maybe I'll try, because, again, it's not Warwick Davis, it's some other uh, small person, I forget his name, but, you know, he fills in the Leprechaun role, and it's a direct sequel to the first one. Uh, I watched it last night, and it was a fucking chore to get through. <laughs> a chore. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but like, everything that makes 1 through 3, or even 1 through 4, fun and, like, stupid and silly and, and, and enjoyable is completely missing. Like, the special effects are really well done. They're really, really good. And Steve is known for that because he does a really good job, right? But, man... You want to talk about, like, bad writing and just, like, really bad jokes? Like, bad, bad jokes. The fucking Leprechaun's limericks are dog shit. Fucking What's-His-Face from Pee Wee comes back as Ozzy just to die and then become, like, a fucking haint or whatever for the main character. The main character, by the way, is supposed to be uh, Jennifer Aniston's daughter. Wait, wait, wait. So Francis makes an appearance? Yeah, it's Francis. Job? Job. <laughs> Does he yes. come in with the Joe outfit again with the suspenders? Oh, dude, he's full on. He's he's running the paint company now, and he's also a fucking taxi service. Uh, get the fuck out of here. I thought he died in Leprechaun 1. I guess not. No, he just got his ear bitten off, which is there. Oh, right. Sewed back on. Right. It's You did say it's a direct sequel. Okay. Does he get killed this time, though? I was really giving it a chance, and I had... That was the only one I didn't see, and I had to watch it before we did this episode because of that. And, like... the. The way he comes back, you know, in the first one, he gets the, fu- you know, fuck you, lucky charms with the gum and the in the four-leaf clover down his throat with the slingshot with the kid from Mom, the, uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, and he fucking melts and falls into the well, right? Done dead. How does he come back in this one? I don't fucking know. It just, like, exp- he just, like, explodes out of the well <laughs> as, like, a gush of, like, green water, and Ozzy's there, and it, like, he, like, gets in his mouth or some shit and then grows into a full leprechaun in his belly and rips out of him and he's reborn. Thanks for showing up, Ozzy. Yeah, pretty much. Good. Fuck him. Uh, you know, it was probably just, you know, an over buildup of uh, semen inside his body. <laughs> he just couldn't hold it anymore inside the body of a, of a leprechaun. It just exploded out of him. There was no uh, starfish to suck it out of him all these years. And you know something? <laughs> Th- Are you saying he had a bad case of green balls? <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, the the final line our uh, protagonist gives is, how about a shamrock shake? And like shoves this fucking tube in his mouth, in Lubden's mouth, and they siphon like distilled clover uh, alcohol into his mouth because one of the, oh my God, that's right. It's like a s- sorority sister house now, the farm or some shit. I'm so angry hearing all of this. <laughs> So you're telling me <laughs> that Lubden is force-fed his own cum against his will, and it kills him? Yes, and then he explodes. <laughs> I guess at least we know he doesn't suck his own dick now, right? Well, yeah, sure, but, like, it, it's not over, right? Then it, it then it turns into, like, yoga hosers for a second, because, like, now we have a bunch of little leprechauns all over the place. What? Oh, for God's sake. What is this, the leaping leprechauns? And it's fucking stupid. And then, like, I don't even know how he dies. They, like, light him on fire or some shit, and then it, the house explodes, and then there's a big fucking green gusher that explodes, and, like, men in blacks, the two uh, uh, main girls, and they get covered with green shit. And Walter Peck, of course, I'm sure is there. He probably gets blasted. Oh, yeah, Walter Peck's like, what? yeah, he's, he's like, on his farm. He's sitting on his fucking porch in his rocking chair. He thinks he's all safe. <laughs> In the country, yeah. The, the, wait, the green, the green shit lands directly next to him. He's like, ha ha, and then like from nowhere, just this geyser of white crap from the sky just hits him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? And then fucking Cumdar walks off into the night like one of the fucking shadows of Colossus <laughs> with the moon eclipsing him. Does your ha 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 ha, peck you fuck. 
But yeah. Uh, and then, like, the end of the movie, the leprechaun's not dead or whatever and, like, is thumbing for a fucking ride and ends up, like, getting on the back of a chicken truck and then the movie ends. Huh. It's trash. I hate it. Thanks, I hate it. I, I really hate it. <laughs> it sucked, like, really bad. Like, I can't even tell you the grueling experience that it was to, to just, like, to get through it. Like, you think Leprechaun 4 in space is going to be so stupid that you want to just, like, hang yourself. But, like, my goodness, like... I. I felt bad for the actors and actresses that are in that movie. And I'm like, this, man, everything's a joke, right? It's one of those movies where everything they do is a joke. And there's a lot of like dramatic walks away from the cameras and stuff. And it's like, oh, why are we going that way? We should be getting in the car. <laughs> That was hilarious. Yeah, I'm slapping my knee over here. Can't you tell? Yeah, it's when you, you you spread bad sense of humor throughout the entire film, so no joke lands. But hey, we have 97 of them. Yeah, but again, like, the gore is cool, and that's literally it. Everything else is just, like this is the best you got like this is like why did this movie need to be made right uh, probably because somebody was gonna lose the uh, rights to it if they didn't yeah, sci-fi channel <laughs> <laughs> probably hellraiser judgment slowly crawls behind a curtain out of sight with that said all that said why don't we segue into what connor was talking about and uh how our f our uh horror icons get sent to space <laughs> what the fuck okay here's the thing and i will defend this to the day i die of the three big ones, Hellraiser 4 is the only one that gets away with it without looking like the just the dumbest shit because it's a story that takes place across multiple timelines. So to have one set in the far future where someone is in space, I'm like, fine. Totally fine. You technically earned that. Jason X is ridiculous. <laughs> Why well, I was going to say, what are your other ones that, that you put on that pedestal? I mean, this one, Leprechaun 4, Jason X, and Hellraiser Bloodlines. That's the only three I really i am aware of. If Freddy goes to space, it's like, whatever, it's just dreams. Who cares? He, he can be anywhere. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I've only seen the first one, but so don't quote me on this, but I think like one of the later Cube movies actually goes to space or something in that, to that effect. That also kind of feels like a natural progression because those things get more complicated as that series goes along. So if you want a giant space station that is a cube or something, yeah, sure, whatever. But like, I don't need, I don't need Halloween in space. You know what I mean? How would you even do that? And that's basically what Jason X is until they're just like, yeah, you know what? Fuck everything, nanites. And then, yeah, Jason gets his really silly upgrade. However, that leads to the best part of that movie when he's doing the Crystal Lake simulation. Literally the best part. And then, like, is the implication at the end of that film, I forget how the uh, timeline is on this, so I could be wrong, but is that supposed to lead into Freddy vs. Jason, or is it just like, oh, if we make an 11th one, this is this could be where it starts? No, no, because they, they go to a different planet altogether. They go to an Earth-like planet where him and the uh, other dude, like, burn up on re-entry. So I guess you could say Jason X is, like, the definitive end of the franchise at some point in the fuck-off future. It's the divergence of the timeline, Yeah. <laughs> through a fucking wormhole that uh hurt put there yes it uh it it forks after jason goes to hell and in one instance he fights freddy krueger and stays on earth and in the second instance he goes into space <laughs> exactly <laughs> well i think the follow-up like i just said i think hurts got him in some kind of simulation he doesn't know he's in one. he thinks he's back at crystal lake but you know hurt he, he's got these uh creatures and monsters from different movies on a farm you know he's got to keep jason sanitized in camp crystal lake he's got to keep sending fucking people in there to get murdered to keep him happy. Jason's, he's got a little hot like Bucky in, uh, in Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like John Hurt's Cabin in the Woods fucking sanctuary. Right. The balls to even, like, put that end sequence where, like, you know, he hits touches down on an Earth-like planet and you see the fucking mask floating in the water, like, give me a break. Like, come on. Like, you, you couldn't even kill him in this instance where it's like, this doesn't matter. You can end this any which way you want. You've already gone so far and above beyond the boundaries of this, you know, insane concept. It doesn't matter what you do at the end. Have him hit by a comet. Who cares? Like, <laughs> and, and that's why I think with this movie that we're going to talk about, they just don't bother explaining anything. They're just like, yeah, yeah loved him. He's on this planet. Whatever. He walks into a ripoff of Aliens and was like, better stick around for a while. <laughs> It's like an episodic entry. I think that's why I like it so much, because it's just like, I don't know, here you go. Here's a what if, like, leprechaun what if. In fact, like, as the opening few minutes, we'll get to it in a few, but like, in the opening ten minutes, I was like, how are these two things going to, oh, it's a planet, oh, okay, you guys don't give a shit. I, I mean, loved in really, when you think about it, I don't know if everyone listening is going to get this reference, but I'm going to say most will. 
He's basically like the MDU's Majin Buu. Okay. Because he could just basically be killed. He comes back. He's blown apart constantly throughout the series. He goes to space. He can shoot lasers out of his fingers, apparently. Um, I mean, I guess he talks a lot more than Majin Buu. Majin Buu really doesn't talk at all, so maybe that's where my analogy just kind of falls <laughs> apart. It is funny, because like, he is kind of like a Dragon Ball villain, and that it, it is magic, but it is also sci-fi bullshit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that was a really bad example, but I hope some of you out there were with me for a moment. I, I, I could see Goku and Lubden exchanging barbs. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, so just real quick, so the director, uh, Brian Trenchard Smith, um, not only does he do this movie, but he's he did BMX Bandits, uh, The Quest, <laughs> what with the kid with Elliot from E.T., uh, Night of the Demons two, which uh, wink wink nod nod, uh, some a bunch of episodes of Silk Stockings, Leprechaun three, Atomic Dog. Do you guys remember that fucking movie? No, no. Okay, maybe it's just me. I know I could see the VHS cover in my fucking head. File it away for that dog month we might do one day. <laughs> the, the Bob Clark dog month? Yeah. And the weirdest one is like a Porky's spinoff called Pimpin' Pee Wee. Like, what? <laughs> okay. Yep. Does he wear a gray suit? I, I don't think so. It's not that Pee Wee. It's some, some guy from Porky's. And then, uh, so again, like I said, like Mark Jones only wrote the first movie so we have dennis pratt writing this installment and the only other notable thing that i saw he wrote was kickboxer three if you want to call it notable and uh and our our good friend gabe bartalos is back doing a, uh the effects for this film um and he's done all the practical effects from leprechaun one to uh in the hood and that was it. He stopped after that. He was like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm done. Just like, uh, War well, Warwick had one more in him, and then that was it. I want to dwell on one more thing about this horror and space thing, because I think yeah. all three of them, well, they all kind of do something similar, where, like, they make an attempt to, well, actually, I think this movie goes way against the other two, because Hellraiser and Jason make an attempt to, like, kill off the big villain, Jason cops at the end. And in Hellraiser Bloodlines, it's heavily implied that the weapon they kill Penhead with is the definitive end of his character, and he's been completely annihilated. And in this, like, I don't say, I'm not gonna say what happens yet, but at first you're like, all right, that's it. And then the movie turns around to personally insult you, <laughs> and then it just ends. <laughs> um, I'd agree with that for sure. <laughs> Can't wait to talk about it. Oh yeah! So without further ado, let's 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 plot crunch uh, Leprechaun Four in space. You just did. <laughs> you said Leprechaun Four in space. <laughs> that's about the size of it. I think that's all anyone needs to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess just to expand on that a little bit. Uh, basically, Lep. Leppy, Mr. Lubden, the titular leprechaun, he, he's trying to marry this princess, uh, what was her name, Zarnia? Xenia, or some shit? Doesn't matter. Uh, he's trying to marry this princess, and, uh, in the process, she's, she's being rescued by this military that, uh, I don't know if we ever get a name, I guess they work for Druidia, or whatever the fuck the name of this planet is. <laughs> It's pretty damn close to Druidia if it's not. They're a bunch of court-martialed space balls. Yeah, it's the Roughnecks, dude. That's, yep. And basically we get a shit ton of, like, aliens and starship troopers references. And basically these Marines fighting lumped in for, for, for reasons that we're going to go into, uh, resulting in a lot of gunfights and uh, some 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 magic, let's, let's say. And uh, it all happens in space. It's not on planet Earth. <laughs> no, nowhere near Earth, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, it's Earth isn't even mentioned. Well, in one stupid throwaway line, it is. Uh, it's it's also one of those movies, as we'll uh, get deeper into it, where they just decided, eh, hey, let's just take the whole fucking kitchen sink and just shove it in here because not only is it Starship Troopers, not only is it Leprechaun, not only is it aliens, but it's also Hellraiser two. Yes, it's also the thing, and it's also John Peters' wet dream. <laughs> right. I wanted to ask you guys, uh, how do you like your CG? Do you like it like Star Fox 64 or like Reboot? I like my CGI to look like the opening of the PC game Spaceship Warlock from 1992. I thought I was playing Halo Combat Evolve for like half a second. Shadows of the Empire. Uh, yeah, that's a better example for sure. Every time they cut back to this fucking, this box they call a shuttle, I was just laughing my ass off. I think Petey Wheatstraw fucking built this thing. It's like a toilet the paper tube flying in space <laughs> it is like it, like it popped up i was like oh i love descent 2 yay 
fucking old Windows games. So we open up on this, uh, on like these asteroids and this spaceship or whatever. Don't insult those Cocoa Puffs like that, okay? Those were <laughs> very clearly pieces of cereal they zoomed in on. Ah, uh, Chex Quest, nice. You know, we're open up. We open up to the locker room scene in fucking Aliens, and uh, Hicks is there, and 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 Hudson's there, and we're all, we get introduced to Vasquez. No, that's not what happens. Look into my eye. <laughs> Fucking, we're introduced to Mooch, Styx, Dolores, Martinez, Books, and and uh, Sergeant Hooker, which is he's listed on IMDb as Metalhead, which we'll get to. Oh, this character. Also, uh, as Styx, fucking Miguel Nun- Nunez Jr.'s guys. Yes, yeah, Spider from uh, Return of the Living Dead and uh, Drawina Man. Yeah, man. When I saw him, I was like, my God, you'll you'll show up in anything. <laughs> yeah, and in Friday Five too. Yes, he's in Friday Five. He gets killed in the shitter. Yep. Goddamn enchiladas. And Street, he's DJ in Street Fighter, isn't he? He sure is. And uh, who, who? How could we forget uh, Pluto Nash? Oh my God. God. Who the fuck was he in Pluto Nash? He was like, he's one of Eddie's friends, like another owner or some shit. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he invites him over like as Miguel Nunez. Right. Like, <laughs> like into the club. I hate that movie. It sucks. Rudy Real, if you're listening, everyone hates that movie. <laughs> You're wrong. Yeah, R- Rudy, you're you're alone. You're you're a man on an island, <laughs> and that's a man who's likes who loves Bunraku. So there you go. I mean, he can share my island, but that's my island. <laughs> He can visit it, but Bunraku is mine. He's 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 in a dinghy, like, just off the coast. I'm just shooting arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away! Uh, Miguel, Miguel's arguably the best part of this movie, but but yeah. Yeah, so Sergeant Hooker walks in, played by uh, Tim Colseri. Don't know what he's from, but uh, actually I do. He was in Full Metal Jacket? Yes, he was a sp- he was the guy that was supposed to play uh, the, the drill sergeant, but he got replaced <laughs> by uh, R. Lee Emery. If you're going to play a drill sergeant and then someone someone sees anything that Arlie Ermey does in a comparison, you've lost your job. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the story goes that he was he was on set as, like, a consultant, but he was doing such a good job, he basically got the role. That's right. Because, that, like, that shit just comes so natural to him. It's ridiculous. Uh, But that's, that's to be said, uh, Tim has some uh, merit of his own, I think. Yeah. A hooker, he actually, like, I don't necessarily like this character, but I didn't hate him either. He's kind of, like, okay, but in the beginning here, they definitely play up that military machismo with him. And, and again, like Joe said, Metalhead, as he's referred to, uh, what was it, on IMDb? Yeah. He has basically part of his head, like Cousin Eddie, is is metal, <laughs> uh, but you could see it. It's like Gary Oldman in fucking uh, Fifth Element, but like actually in his skull. Yes. He's like a reverse Kano. I'm telling you right now, that guy does not know what day it is, where he is. <laughs> no. Who he's talking to or what he's doing, because they're like, yep, Sard lost half the skull that day and carried a guy on his back all the way home. Like, okay, but when he got home, could he count? Could he do any? Thing. Every time he fires up that microwave, he fucking pisses his pants and forgets who he is. Yeah, exactly. We, we see that in action a little later in the film. Well, I'm looking at him, I'm like, everyone here is just pretending he's a sergeant. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's great. He's he's responsible for some of the biggest laugh out louds in this movie. Yeah, half of his brain was scooped out by what I'm assuming is a mortar and probably never recovered. And they're just like, fuck it, put fucking, put a hubcap in there or something. Who cares? Well, you know that you know what they did? They they put the lore drop in there and they said, hey, go, go let everybody know what's going on in this movie because he just basically like rattles off everything the audience needs to know he's like yeah it's planet ithaca and uh, we chasing this bastard for for six months he's destroyed half the half the universe or or so basically like playing up lubden big time that he's a major threat well he's been so okay he he mentions that he's an alien by the way he's never once referred to as a (laughs) leprechaun in this film see sean your dragon ball thing is actually ringing true he's a planet conquering (laughs) monster who has to be put down by a sci-fi force but he's green instead of pink. He's definitely a speedster. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Of course he is. I forgot about that. Um, He's like, the leprechaun is like going to mining colonies and taking all the gold and then like hoarding it on this planet. Yeah, you're right. That is what it is. But uh, because he because he's Lubden, he's probably leaving a, a, a sea of bodies behind him. Oh sure, yeah. I like that he is taking all this gold and seemingly melting it down, so he can then make his own like xenomorph hive out of it. <laughs> I, yeah, guess yeah. Because he lives in this fucking golden cavern, like. <laughs> the weirdest thing he fucking he chews it up and spits it all over the wall yeah maybe (laughs) 
But basically, their mission is to go there and save this princess and take out Lubden, more or less. Yes, seek and destroy, right? Because they got to put an end to this shit because they're hired by this guy who <laughs> who comes in. We actually we only see him on a TV monitor, but his name's Dr. Mittenhand. Oh, my God. He's my favorite character. Oh, hello. Welcome to my ship. Are you all ready to go down to the planet and kill the alien or whatever? Definitely the descendant of a certain veterinary doctor we like to reference. <laughs> <laughs> For the last time, I told you I don't have sedatives. <laughs> I don't think he sells sedatives, this guy. Tranquilizers, I do have. Mutant potions, I do have. Now now bring me the small monster so I may poke him with things. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Mittenhand is played by Guy Siner. Uh, he was on the original Doctor Who series. Oh, wow. That makes so much sense now. It, honestly, if he was, um, oh, God damn it. Who's the name of that, the Doctor Who, like, the, I almost called him Doctor Who and almost had a legion of Doctor fans come and murder me. Does it make sense because he played a dialect on the show? Is that why? No. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the head of the Daleks, and I can't remember his fucking name. The dude is always, like, stuck behind a console and shit, or in, or in some kind of motorized chair. I just know what those things look like. That's all I know, and I know what this guy looks like when they finally reveal him, and just, that's all I'm gonna say. I think his name's Raven, or Robin, or some shit. Something like that. I thought... Uh, Admiral Pike when he first shows up and like it just like just uh, he would just talk with beeps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's also voiced a couple of Star Wars games and the big one for me was he's the voice of Man Ray in SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I was like, holy shit, really? Uh, he's also in Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, originally they wanted uh, <laughs> Eric Avari to play his character. That would have been weird. Oh, yeah. We're also introduced to uh, Tina Reed's, um, and she's like the scientist character, and she's there to collect alien samples or whatever. She's basically like the main character. Uh, yeah, she's one of the main characters. She's sexy Ripley. Yeah. Her, her and this other guy who is part of the Marines, this guy Malloy uh, books, is the other kind of main guy. Fucking Sylvester Stallone <laughs> light. <laughs> Diet Sylvester Stallone. They definitely were like, somebody on set or the casting director or somebody was like, you know what? He's like, he kind of looks like Stallone, like in certain lighting. Like, yeah, have him take his shirt off. <laughs> He's a he's a hunky boy, dude. Yeah. Some of these names are so on the nose as far as alien ripoffs goes. Like, come on, books and Hicks. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. It and it's always like I don't know. I think one of them is actually one of the names from Aliens. Uh, what the fuck is it? Um. Well, they got Kowalski. There's Kowalski. Yeah, Kowalski is one of the guys from Aliens. That's that's what it was, Sean. That's what I'm saying. As this movie goes, like, in the, I'm joking more so in the beginning because it's kind of like real, you know, low hanging fruit with the Starship Troopers locker room shit and the Aliens locker room shit. Well, here's the thing: Star Starship Troopers didn't come out yet. It comes out the next year. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Then it's just Aliens. Unless it's they had like the inside <laughs> scoop, we don't know if it was filmed on the same lot or not. It's, it's fu that's fucking crazy to me because a year apart, and you look at like, granted, I I know the budget of this movie is super tight, but you still look at it and go like, yeah, the fourth entry in a notable horror series, and then Starship Troopers, and it looks like there's twenty years between them. Ah, uh, yeah, man, low budget filmmaking at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> but, but just to put a pin on what I was saying, as the movie goes on, especially like the last half hour, it's like, wow, James Cameron, why did you not get on the fucking phone and make a call to your lawyer? Because it's Leprechaun 4. <laughs> yeah, I, right, I guess that must have been what it was, right? He wasn't going to get enough money out of it. Th I don't think James Cameron has even seen this movie. Yeah, he's like, there's, he's like there's, how many Leprechaun movies are there? Yeah. <laughs> there's a Leprechaun movie? What is, what? What's, what's Leprechaun? Who's Warwick Davis? <laughs> You mean that Ewok guy? I didn't put the fucking the Alien 2 reference uh, together until right now, uh, thinking of how that, this fucking movie ends. Because by the time that was rolling around, I was just digging my fingers into my temples. Like, get over with. There is just so much stuff in this movie. Like, when you sit down and start thinking about it, obviously not one-to-one. -one. Like, not even close. But there's just... Uh, I, I mean, it's a leprechaun instead of an alien. Uh, sure. Yeah, no shit. But, like, the whole dropship sequence is the same. Yeah. Oh, uh, listen. I'm not, I'm not giving it any benefit of the doubt here. There's a lot of fucking shit getting ripped off in this film. I'm the one saying Cameron should have sued him. Like, don't get me wrong here. Oh, I, I, uh, yeah, sure. The fucking Ridley Scott should have sued him, and he didn't even do aliens. No. no. 
Uh, I think Ridley Scott hates aliens. P.S. Uh, so maybe he did watch this movie and was like, better film. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> they did it better. He's so bitter. He's like, Leprechaun 4 is better. And was like, shut the fuck up, Ridley, okay? <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up, Ridley Scott. Go make a Robin Hood movie or two. <laughs> oh, no. No, pass. Uh, so, yeah. So we're all, so, uh, so we're on our drop ship to the fucking planet Ithaca to go kill this fucking uh, alien, as they call it. But it's uh, it's definitely Leprechaun. And this is the scene that Connor was alluding to earlier in the episode where this table, uh, almost verbatim, we we might have to do a fucking side-by-side on Instagram, of this table uh, and chair <laughs> from fucking the unlucky Leprechaun. And uh, he he's whining and dying in this Princess Serena. And uh, it doesn't really take much. He basically shows her, hey, I got all this gold and rubies and shit. If you want to marry me, I can just make your Rich, what do you say? Because she's like a princess, but she's poor because her dad's a king and like gave all the their wealth away. But he's still the king somehow, and he like wants to marry her because she's royal and he wants to be a king and rule the universe. Her dad did the uh, the bad ending of Fable Three, where you do good by your kingdom, but everything sucks. <laughs> Well, you know what? You got to circumvent that shit, Connor. You just, you put the game on in the background. You just let that fucking guitar play till you get all the money. <laughs> Takes like 20 hours and then you beat the game. You know why I know that? Because I fucking did it. That was a fucking deep cut. <laughs> yeah, it was a goddamn nightmare. Fuck you, Peter Molyneux. But Sean, if you plant a tree, it will grow in this game. I am lying. I'm Peter Molyneux. Yeah, but going back to Leprechaun 4... She uh she gets enticed by this and and very quickly says yeah okay fuck it I'll marry you she's a gold digger straight up uh while these marines are surrounding the fucking cave I love when Warwick comes out because he's like when he makes his big appearance he's like in a fucking tuxedo with like a penguin <laughs> cigar holder yes! and he's like he's like ah oh, good evening and then he quickly changes into his typical leprechaun regalia for the rest of the movie yeah um so yeah he's like oh you know my my you, you you're gonna be my future wife and she wants his money or whatever and she's like yeah okay fine we'll kill my dad and you'll be king you just give me money she's like cool golf course jewels i love these things what they were like five dollars she's like you can totally kill my dad party city jewelry great i'm sure that whole table is full of like several cosmic mcguffins that for movies we've either watched or haven't watched yet yeah well they're the, the infinity gems are in that bowl yeah <laughs> she just she knocks the gauntlet over she's like ooh. What are these? So this guy, aptly named Lucky, comes in, and he's like, oh, oh, a bunch of gold and jewels, takes his fucking helmet off, and starts, like, fucking fishing through it. And then, of course, here comes Lubden, just waiting to kill him. With his trusty fucking shillelagh lightsaber, by the way. Oh, boy. This is kind of where I started to slump into my seat, and I was like, oh, all right, we're opening with a Star Wars gag. <laughs> in uh it's fun well my, i i love about this is like he he creates this this fucking cane saber or this lucky saber what do you want to call it <laughs> lepro sword and like instead of i don't know a killing blow he just hacks this guy off at the knees <laughs> that's that's it he just cuts his fucking legs off he cuts him down like a fucking tree hey he likes to have fun and then we get like one of many fucking shootouts with this leprechaun because he takes this guy's gun <laughs> yeah I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah, like, run that sentence by yourself one more time. The leprechaun gets involved in one of many shootouts. It's like a you'll never take me alive copper yeah. shootout. And it happens, like, three <laughs> times <laughs> over the course of this movie. You'll never take me alive, space marines. Yeah, you never get me. Here's the thing. It's a funny visual seeing the leprechaun with, like, this fucking space blaster in his hand. It really is. But later in the movie, he's just, like, pointing his fingers and palpatining people. Well, also, in the movie, he conjures up a six shooter yeah <laughs> right he's just a fucking goof right like he, he could just do whatever he wants there's just so much leprechaun involved gunplay it's the weirdest fucking thing <laughs> why why does he have so many guns he's magical why did he pick up the gun <laughs> okay so the 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 literal alien ripoff kowalski uh, oh, I think it's Wurzbowski in Aliens. Anyway, he throws a fucking, uh, thermal detonator at fucking, um, Lubden. And he's like, yeah, it won't hurt, whatever, who gives a shit? But the princess comes out, and he's like, get out of here, I gotta, I gotta save you, for whatever reason. And he sacrifices himself for this princess, and jumps on this grenade, and explodes. This was, uh, when I really sat back and went, what am I watching? <laughs> 
<laughs> that was me about an hour in, so why lasted a little longer than you? Yeah, it's like I was like, wait a second. First of all, not only is it immediately evocative of Jason Goes to Hell, because it probably happens almost at the same time in each movie, like about five to six minutes in. It both involves like a woman, you know, being involved in like a hail of gunfire and the, the main character being blown to fucking bits. And then being born through somebody else's body. Ugh. Oh. This is the exact moment when Jason Voorhees is, is getting extracted from the Earth. Yeah. Um, it's also a running, I guess we'll call it a joke, of Lubden getting blown up in the movies, but instead of the end of the movie, this time it's the beginning. Here's the thing with this particular incarnation of Lubden. He can just explode and reform at will. It seems. Majin Buu! That's what I'm saying! I guess that's kind of the whole point I was trying to make. Yeah. So they blow him up, and fucking Kowalski's like, Yeah, but, uh, hold on, Sarge, I'm gonna fucking top it off or whatever. And he's like, Yeah, a little golden, little Rocky Mountain spring water. <laughs> he pisses all over this corpse, and the colonel's like, Yeah, death from above. And then Freddy Krueger comes back to life. <laughs> Yeah, he pisses fire. John Saxton's over there like, no, <laughs> don't pee on the corpse. You never pee on the corpse. Basically, this green fucking glowing stream goes up his piss stream into his penis. Man. And nobody responds to that. They're like, huh, hell of a thing there. And they just walk away. <laughs> the strangest part of this whole bit is that the leprechaun's head is looking and smiling at them. <laughs> Like, winking and nodding and shit. Right, but, like, so I was thinking, like, does that head just continue living in the cave by itself? Yeah, maybe. Is that, Does it regrow? Like, according later, like, you know, does it regrow into another leprechaun? Is that how this works? Or we, are, is it, like, munchies where, like, if you blow them up, like, more come? It's like he's just one consciousness spread across several blown-up Lubdens across time and space. Oh. He's like, I'm both here, but I'm also dismembered in a well somewhere and in a cave on this planet and over there. My life is perpetual agony. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe. It could be. I was thinking he's reincarnated every time, but that kind of lines up better. One lives in a fucking Harry Houdini's fucking tree. One's trying to have, you know, universal global, you know, domination. Yeah. Talking to him is like talking to Dr. Manhattan. He's in like four different timelines at the same time. <laughs> it's just loved in on the moon. It's just on the, he's on the Mars as fucking starfish. And he's like... <laughs> It's 1984. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting married. Well, that's a sad thing. When he blew up, the starfish went flying. You know, it was down his pants at the time. Mm. And uh, he never got it back. It's still on the planet. He might have to come back later. Oh, it's on Ithaca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if GVD knows how to get there or if Hurt knows it's there. I don't know if there's a tracking device on it. Don't bother me. I'm pretty sure Ithaca isn't Saturn, right? Like that. Ithaca is the is their name for Saturn. Like that's where the fucking sandworms live, dude. I, I I could see it from Beetlejuice. The real crime though was that we no longer could get Shamrock shakes because uh, Lubden had nothing to empty himself into, and uh, GVD was never able to then empty said device, aka Starfish, into the. It's a thing. Again, go back, listen to that episode from last year if you really want to know, want to know what the fuck we're talking about. If not, just uh. Just, just, just continue listening. Back on Earth, fucking McDonald's goes out of business because they can't do Shamrock Shakes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean we have no more Shamrock Shakes? I don't know. He hasn't come back yet. I have no idea where he is. We lost the supply. You keep reading online, people complaining about it. They just haven't been the same. Not since 96. Not since we lost the Leprechaun. Those fucking ice cream machines are not broken. They're lying to us all the time, okay? <laughs> it's a whole subreddit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, what is it? It's, uh, L Anon, Leprechaun Anonymous. She Shamrock shakes are fake? Yeah, well, Michael Keaton's getting those instant packets now instead of, like, real ice cream. Real Lubden juice. <laughs> we got the founder? Yeah. <laughs> oh, a quick, quick founder story real quick here because you brought it up. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend, when that movie came out in theaters, I, I, it was some big joke because I kept, like, seeing the commercial on TV. that It, it just looked horrible. Uh, and every time the commercial came out, I'd be like, the founder, we should go see it. So then we did, but we were, like, really stoned, and I was just laughing at the movie constantly because it's just like a Tim and Eric sketch sometimes. Some, if, you, if you've seen that movie, there are scenes in that film where Michael Keaton is just, like, eating the scenery beyond belief. Oh, yeah. That guy in real life is a fucking piece of shit, by the way. Oh, yeah. But back to Leprechaun 4. <laughs> Laura Dern. Who leaves Laura Dern? Well, that's just one of the many stupid things. Evil Agent Cooper. 
<laughs> well, that was her tulpa. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it's a, you were manufactured. So Lubden, I guess, is in this guy's body, and maybe he has a second body alive on an, on this planet, or just a head. We're not sure. Or he just zapped this guy's dick for 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 a last laugh, right? Okay. Yeah, maybe. What'd you do? Nothing. I just really wanted to, you know, give you one more zinger. Uh, that was right in your fucking peeper there. H- have you been zinged? Shut up. <laughs> So then we cut to Harold. <laughs> this fucking guy. And he's like the scientist. He's like the, the crony scientist guy that works for Dr. Mittenhand. Fucking Woody Allen, motherfucker. Yeah, he sure is. He, he's also got a, uh, he has a very Quentin Tarantino-esque relationship with feet. God damn it, you fucking beat me to the punch on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't stop at the feet. He goes all in. Oh, yeah, he sure does. Uh, there's like this whole like side plot point. Like when they bring the, so they bring the princess back. She gets her hand cut off uh, during the explosion that we just talked about. And there's like this whole uh, subplot where Reed's like breaks it down for us that like the princess, like healing the princess and bringing her back can like make a peace treaty between them and these and, and her people because they're a bunch of dicks or some shit uh, or something that we never follow up on but that's why they don't like excise her from the ship yeah yeah how dare they leave us out of this intergalactic conflict yeah <laughs> there's another movie going on somewhere else it's like if star wars just deviated from the plot to go hang out with what's his nuts from uh, rise of skywalker for two hours <laughs> why <laughs> like what oh fuck what was his fucking name uh, oh babu frick <laughs> Babu Frick, yeah. I would I would watch the adventures of Babu Frick. Yeah, a 90-minute Babu Frick movie where she's like, bleh, bleh, you Babu, Babu Frick. Oh, he fucking teams up with Grogu and they go on a fucking space adventure? Sure, sign me up. Hey, hey! <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, this is the... And we get, like, the first inclination that uh, uh, Tina and, and Books are, like, into each other or whatever. You know, she's the brain, she's the brawn. They're from opposite sides of the of the spectrum, man. How could they possibly like each other, man? She's a weak girl, and he's a strong man. All I'm gonna say is, if you if you listen to this show, you know where I stand on this fucking trope in movies, and I hate it. Why is it here? We don't need it at all. It adds nothing to the movie. I will totally concur with that one, especially for this. It just creates, like, several awkward scenes. It, they also struggle to maintain any semblance of chemistry or, like, likability or, uh, like, relatability or anything. It's like, you're just two boxes who are in the same room just bumping faces. I don't care what you're doing. Oh, yeah. So then we cut to the cargo bay, and I just want to note this, that there's a fucking shrink ray. Um, that, like, shrinks cargo down so they can store more in this cargo bay. <laughs> wow. Shrinking slash growing or expanding. Yes. they can. Well, they regrow it to, like, bring it back up to the size. I believe the term is embiggen, okay? Oh, okay, yeah. Embiggen, yeah. What, let me ask you a question. Why do they need all that gold? Why don't they just have one chunk and just make it gigantic? Uh, you would think... Hank Pym technology in this fucking spaceship? <laughs> I would say Hank Pym's doing real good for himself in the year 20 blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this the sergeant in here because uh right cuz he's there with Harold who's who's showing off this ray gun. He's like, "Oh, look at this fucking shrink ray. Isn't that great?" And he's like, "I don't give a fuck, dickhead." He's like, Sh- "Hurry your shit up so I'm going to get fucking drunk." Shut up, my head's cold. So he's kind of like debating with Harold like Joe was just saying and then Mittenhand comes on the fucking monitor and he's like, "Well, I, 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 nobody can leave the ship until I say so." And he's like, "Well, our contract's only till midnight. We're out of here soon." And he's like, "Well, I, I, I am in charge here, and nobody can leave until I fucking say so. <laughs> until I so say, say so." We have to detail the framing of Mittenhand every time we see him until he's finally revealed, because like he's just a head in a screen, literally talking head. The camera for him is like positioned just at a slight angle where it's looking up at just his head. It's like an earthworm's uh, POV. He looks like he just he just walked out of Dark City, dude. He's bald, he's pale, he's got purple lips. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> shut it down, shut it down forever. <laughs> shut it down. Well, you're right. They always show him on this monitor that you then see later is like, I guess like can move around and shit because it like slides behind Harold at one point. Yeah, that's the funniest fucking scene in the movie when he slowly slides behind someone on his monitor. Um, uh, But he also like, he reminds me of the talking heads from Futurama. Just those fucking heads in a jar. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Because just this disembodied head who just zings people the whole fucking movie. It's so funny. And then 
can guess where we go from there, fellas. The fucking MDU bar, baby. We're hanging out in that fucking lounge. I couldn't believe it. Having a few drinks. Hercules. I mean, I guess it makes sense. They're on. You're on basically a, med, a military spaceship. This is a common thing in these kind of movies. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, like like Connor said, Achilles and fucking Alexander are there. Like there's a hard cutaway later on, and Achilles and Alexander in the corner, like. What the fuck are these people doing? I thought we were on... I thought this is the robot jock ship. Wait, wait, do we miss our shuttle off? Yeah. <laughs> they were passing through, like, a layover on this fucking ship? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were like Joe Buchanan in the fucking book version of Frankenstein Unbound. They, like, went into, like, the wrong spot and had, like, a time jump, and they, they couldn't get back. Maybe we shouldn't have taken a nap in this bar and just let time... <laughs> fucking boodle in, you son of a bitch. That's how they got there, yeah. The time slip, yep. Yeah, Alexander's like, there's a leprechaun here, we must leave. <laughs> uh, what the fu- I will kill you with cock, uh, mace, okay? I thought you were afraid of nothing, Alexander, only leprechaun. He can kill me with magic. The leprechaun is already dead inside my mind. Yeah, <laughs> leprechaun! I have already drank Shamrock Shake. Imagine him fighting, like, in the mech, like, Lubden at the end of this movie when he grows really big. Oh, that there you go. That's, that's what should have happened. With the dick gun and everything? You know, you just, like, you just kind of hypothetically improve the finale. Like, why wasn't there a big, dumb, cheap-looking robot to fight Big Lubden? What the fuck? <laughs> Get away from her, you leprechaun. I guess they didn't want to be exactly like aliens. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty exactly like aliens. <laughs> Just that one concession. We should have the robot. No, it's too much. It's too much, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. It probably just wasn't in the bunch. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. So we're at this bar, and all the guys are, like, drinking, and they're like, yeah, uh, let's drink to loose women and, and the army or whatever. And the guy's like, how about we drink to Lucky, our fallen comrade? And everybody's like... Yeah, okay, I, I guess so. Way to be a downer, man. And then, like, they're, they're fucking, you know, the the one chick in the group goes with uh, Kowalski to go fuck him in, like, a hallway or something. And they, they disappear into this alley, and, oh, man, uh... <laughs> How do you even describe what happens? She goes to shake hands with the big guy, dude. They disappear into a room that's like adjacent from the room that Zeno kills uh what's his face in an alien, the first guy. Um Brett. Henry Dean Staten. There we go, yep. Yeah, it looks like it could happen like like outside of whatever room that takes place in, because it's the same dimly lit, like chromatic, just like industrial things are everywhere. There are chains hanging out the ass everywhere in this movie. I was looking for Uncle Frank. I was looking for fucking Freddy. <laughs> I was looking for Munchie, to be perfectly honest. Are you saying Hellraiser 4 is happening in the opposite end of the space station? It's possible. It, it, yeah, like Joe said, it's fucking possible. Pinhead shows up, he's like, wait, wait, we're in the wrong place. Wrong, wrong movie. Wrong, we, I didn't park here. <laughs> wait, who opened, I op you opened the box? Question mark, I came? Fancy seeing you here, old chum. Oh, God damn it, Lubden. So I was flashing back to a scene from Brain Damage uh, during this moment. Oh, yeah, you got a real monster in there. <laughs> yeah. Literally. His penis just starts pulsating and bulging and growing. And for some reason, Dolores thinks this is her fault for turning him on, which is a running thing that keeps being brought up later on in the movie. There's, like, bugle music playing, and the leprechaun's fist is this guy's dick punching out of his fucking pants. Yes! This is also far less graphic than it should have been, because... I mean, like, this could have been a pretty memorable way to off somebody in a horror film, but instead, like, his pants just stretch as Lubden's crawling out of his pelvis... And there's no blood, there's no spray, there's nothing. He just crawls out of, like, an opening in his jut, like, his now comically oversized pants. Always wear a prophylactic. Yeah, and then quip, yeah, and then quips on the way out, of course. <laughs> and Dolores just screams and runs off, and then Warwick, he just starts, like, fucking walking around this spaceship in these dark hallways, limicking to himself constantly. Man, he... He is just, like, limicking loud as fuck to himself, like, going on these long tangents when he's trying to be quiet and hiding. He has this long... He doesn't give a fuck. He has this long one where he's, like, talking about he's eternal as the sun and shit, and nobody can kill him and stuff. Yeah, I guess not. She goes to shoot him after he comes out of the dude's dick, and then he has, like, a fucking Colt 45, and he's doing a John Wayne impression. <laughs> Big iron, big iron. Well, obviously, he had it from uh, Lucky when he took it from Lucky, even though he is now a new body that came out of Kowalski's penis. He still has that gun. Maybe. No, but it, it, it could be. He keeps it around for close encounters, yeah. Yeah, because he shoots her pistol out of her fucking hand, and he laughs, and then she runs off. He's like, I'm not going to kill you. Oh, hell, I'm going to kill you, pilgrim. Yeah, he does like a whole...
whole John Wayne voice? That was weird. <laughs> and then she's running away, and he trips her and then gets on top of her and implies he's going to do something to her uh, if, if she doesn't give him back his his bride, and she needs him in the balls and gets away. Yeah, and then, and here, so here it is, right? Like, it's the gold, and then it's the bride, and then it's the gold, and then it's the bride, and then it's not the bride, but it's being a king. It's like all this convoluted shit. Like, instead of just, I want me gold, it's, <laughs> I want all this other bullshit. The one consistent through line, though, is people getting hit in the nuts. Oh, yeah, there's so much fucking crotch trauma in this. I, I missed it. It's been a long time since we've had it. <laughs> In the MDU, and I'm, I'm I'm here for it. Not quite baby's day out levels, but close. Not nothing's gonna top that that fucking crunch stomp. Look, that man died after that movie was over. Okay, he went into severe shock. Like he's probably got internal bleeding. So, there's like a quick scene in the bar where books is again more of this bullshit romance between Tina and and books, and she's just like talking to this guy, and she's like, "I'm a biologist, you know, a doctor of biology." And she's like, smart is a relative term depending on your definition of intelligence. Um, I kind of weirdly like this part because yeah. he throws it back in her face and he's like, just because I'm some big fucking Marine doesn't mean I'm a moron. Like, I understood what you said. Like, don't uh, don't just assume I'm an idiot. It's like the pseudo intellectualism that's just like, shut up. He's like, I'm an astrophysicist. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> At the same token... He then goes on to say, like, a bunch of shit that kind of, like, really blows it for any chance he even had. And then is, like, moping about it to fucking, uh, Miguel Nunez later. Like, oh, man, what's with love, man? What, uh... It's tough. Who could give a shit? Well, then while they're moping and, uh, two of the other I think it's Mooch and Danny are, like, dancing drunk... Dolores fucking runs in, and, and this has got to be like an MDU classic at this point. It's been in so many of these goddamn movies we've done. You're never gonna believe this. He's alive! Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back! Oh, man. Grab, strap your belt on, kid. We're going leprechaun hunting. Strap your belt on. Mario and Luigi just walk in off fucking frame. All right, we got it. Scapelli. I was kind of shocked they took this woman's word and actually did something, though. Oh, totally. And this is... Here, we go full... Quentin Tarantino goes full on kissing this woman's fucking feet. I hated it. Because this princess is, like, laid up, and he's, like, siphoning her blood or some shit. However, this leads to the best... We were referencing it before. The best visual gag in this movie. Because he's looming over her body and he's like kissing her feet and like rolling up this like weird tarp he has over and in the background right it fucking mitten mitten hands fucking little monitor just slowly slides across this little track and just stops (laughs) and just stares at him (laughs) and just glares at him he starts kissing her stomach and he and he pulls like the hand wrap away and like her hands grown back and he's like oh my god and he's he's like Harold I see you fucking pervert Harold you're very naughty boy Harold and this is how he kind of becomes his stooge full full on I mean he was he was regardless but uh, Mittenhand finds out that the fucking princess can regenerate her limbs so he like has him like siphon her blood out so they can do tests on it so he can regrow his fucking body back as we find out right <laughs> there's a uh, there's a weird connection to Jason X here too because in the beginning of that movie when they get Jason on board whoever like is leading that group of idiots like calls some paralyzed man on a monitor and they have like a similar conversation about like obtaining some kind of asset or like we can experiment on him or something like that because they said like oh yeah jason's body's worth a fortune that's right because he's regenerative right or some shit they they make that yes oh yeah (laughs) it's fucking weird i fucking forgot about about that so this ripped off aliens and then that movie ripped off this movie okay man jason x ripped off leprechaun (laughs) four How sad is that? I guess when you get to 10, you know? I, yeah, there you go. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, and Jason X came out in, like, what, like, 99 or something like that? Or, like, 2000? I saw that fucking movie in the f- movie theater. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. It was the first Friday the 13th I could see in the theaters. Uh, the first one I could was Freddy vs. Jason, which is why I think I have such a weird affinity for it. Um, and the next one after that was, you know, the remake, and that was it. For everyone. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in perpetuity until until what's his face stops trying to frivolously sue everybody. Well, yeah. So then the Marines are going after Lubden officially now. That, now that Dolores is like, yeah, Kowalski got killed by him, and he and he tried to you know basically sexually assault me, and uh, they're gonna go into like the waste disposal area isn't there a better way to dispose of organic waste yeah okay why do you have an umbrella lab as your as your waste disp- like why is it a series of corridors <laughs> like growing this disgusting fatal bacteria what are you doing it's a fucking alien maze like the set of alien the first film with a flesh eating bacteria that encircles the entire fucking uh, room. But yeah, they're gonna go in there and thank god uh, Tina Reeves is there, the doctor, to be like, uh, you need to wear like a hazmat suit or your, <laughs> your flesh is just gonna be eaten away in like seconds. Oh. Okay, Mooch, you're going in. So they fucking go in this place and of course Leprechaun's in there, but he has his own little suit. Why? <laughs> why? Why does he need that? Why oh why does Lubden have his own containment suit? <laughs> We just watched him get blown up and then was fine. Yeah, what would be the... Di- why, why would he need the suit to protect him from flesh-eating bacteria if it doesn't do anything? He's impervious to long-term damage. What the fuck are you doing? You're just cosplaying at this point. Be just a goof on him, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, this is just a gag. I don't need this. Like It's like fucking Fenrir in the cop hat. It's the same thing. <laughs> right. Because he's, he's, again, like sliding past people like he's got roller skates on to freak him out and shit. I, I just want to say that... People should go back and listen to the Runestone episode only for Joe's line of when we're, we're about to get to that moment and he's like, this werewolf has a fucking sense of humor, okay? Yeah. Also, just check out the Runestone in general. It's a great flick. Just check out the Runestone. That's a fucking great episode and a great movie. <laughs> but then, you know, again, showing this shillelagh, this fucking walking cane that he has that is just like, it's like Hubie Halloween's fucking like soup canister. It's just, it's basically a multi-tool that can do whatever he needs at the moment. Oh, yeah. Because then like a blade shoots out of the end of it. <laughs> it's like the penguin. He's <laughs> got a fucking blade at the end. Yeah. This is also just more of a, of a stick than a shillelagh. A shillelagh was like a, like a, a weighted club that you'd swing around. Oh, yeah. He's had he's had much better looking shillelaghs in the past. Yeah. Yeah, this is just, this is just a stick. But I, I guarantee that's what they were going for. For sure. No, it totally is. That's like his signature fucking weapon. So then he uh, slices uh, Mooch's fucking suit up, and then for some reason... Uh, Books thinks he's going to survive and has a gunfight with Lubden instead of just booking it out of there immediately. Connor, is this what happened to you? <laughs> no, remember, Connor, it was because he went back in time uh, to warn us about Terminator 3. The Terminator episode, Terminator Salvation episode, yeah. Yeah, I tried to jump into the Speed Force uh, without enough practice, and uh, my skin went, and the rest of me didn't. That's right. So it wasn't flesh-eating bacteria. Yeah, no, it's just somewhere in the timeline. It was just fucking just swirling around. Uh, yeah, so this guy's a fucking bag of shit with bone. Like he's it's just bones in a in a suit. I will say this is the this is the fastest acting flesh eating bacteria I've ever seen. It looks like a bunch of crites got on his ass. Yes, he is fine one second and like has uh, fine enough to like have weight and have to be carried by a uh, handsome man. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as they get out, they're like, "What's wrong?" They go, "Oh, he's just bones and goop, and that's it." Like, dude. How did you not know that he was just suddenly bones? Like, we were like, wow, you just got a lot lighter. This is, this is fine, yeah. Oops, sorry about that. Way to go, Frank Stallone. So then we cut to, like, the bridge, and, like, uh, the colonel's like, oh, you little pencil neck geek. He's like, I want to talk to your fucking, uh, I want to talk to Dr. Mittenhands right now. And he's like, okay, here we go. Here, here he is. Here the great Dr. Mittenhands. There he goes. <laughs> here you go, Dr. Mittenhands. He's going to have it sl- The doors are going to... Oh, the big door. Slow reveal. You ever see Wizard of Oz? Play the Doom sound effects right now. <laughs> Yeah, the fucking Doom 2 door sound effects. Yeah. Why? Is the rock on this ship somewhere with the BFG? <laughs> Every fucking 90s sci-fi movie used the Doom door sound effect at least once. If it's not that, it's the fucking proton stream sound effect from Ghostbusters. You just hear that in movies randomly every once in a while. Oh yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the creature effects too you hear in in other movies, especially like the Slimer one. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this door opens. And this fucking robot, cyborg, whatever, rolls out. He's so much less than I thought he was going to be physically. Like, I thought he'd be, like, a torso with arms. This motherfucker is just 
one arm, his head, and, like, a tenth of his chest. And the rest is just, like, weird, ambiguous. Like, like his chest looks like those fucking bombs from Die Hard with a Vengeance. And the rest of him is just this weird box. And he has, like, tubes and all these kinds of weird shit. Just ha- It just looks super busy and weird. I love it so much because, again, he it looks like a Dalek with just, like, a human stapled onto the top of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hitched a ride and never got off. <laughs> I did an experiment and here I am. I cracked him over the crowbar and I just kicked him out. I evicted the Dalek. Ignore the skin flap in front of my chest. It looks fake, but it, trust me, it's part of my body. I don't even know what that accent was, but <laughs> that is that is the weirdest part of his like his aesthetic. It's like his skin is attached to this like little metal console, but like it looks like there's screws or nails keeping his skin on. I'm like that just looks impractical. Like, what? Like one good tug and he's just going to come off. <laughs> oh, yeah, the rivets? And you know that fucking flesh is rotting, you think? Yeah. I'm going to make a, uh assumption here, and I'm going to just say he was a member of uh, maybe not the Winter Stepfather Project, but whatever the fuck was going on in Tetsuo, the Iron Man happened to this guy, I think, at some point. Well, he tries, he tries to become Zolta is what he tries to be. Yeah. <laughs> He tries is the key word. I went toe for toe with the metal fetishes, and he is very powerful. Have you ever heard of that uh, Avenger named Vision? Well, I tried to be him, but I fucked up. I am historically very bad in when, can, when dealing with my enemies. Because <laughs> at one point he mentions that he was part of some kind of experiment, and Harold's like, well, did it go okay? And he's like, yeah, it went great. What do you think? Look at me! And he's like, oh, okay, sorry, yeah, my bad. He says some shit like, I tried to be the first computer with an organic structure. I fucked up. Wait, so, oh, he's Armin Zola from Winter that's Soldier. That's what I was saying. Oh, that's what I meant to say, Zola. <laughs> He's Armin, he's Armin Zola. <laughs> Look around you, Captain. I am more alive than I have ever been. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still kind of here. Okay, Kel Hydra. It's too late. You will be dead. I like to think of myself as the man behind the curtain, like Visit of Oz. If anything, Sean, he is the leader and founder of the Winter, Fo- so, uh, Winter Stepfather program, okay? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's kind of like the uh, the leader in Fallout 1, the fucking president who's just like blob with eyes. But yeah, no, I like the idea of him being like, I have preserved my life artificially for hundreds of years, creating sleeper agents in the, sle- in the Winter Stepfather program. Him and fucking Crookshank were working on it, you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he somehow ended up like this. Yes, <laughs> in space. This guy basically says to them, okay, if you hunt Lubden down and kill him, because he wants the prince. Because they're basically like, let's give him the princess, get him the fuck out of here. We don't need this shit. And uh, Mittenhand's like, well, if you kill him instead, I'll pay you a hundred times what uh, I hired you uh, for. And they're all like, oh, a hundred times more than I was getting paid? Sh- sign me up. Yes, now go get my wallet in the top desk over there. I can't reach it. It's in my back pocket of my jeans. It's in my back pocket, my jeans over there. You have jeans? Yeah, don't ask questions and be rude. Go get <laughs> I have to say, though, like, I get that they think they could take this guy out because, you know, they're, they're big, tough Marines or whatever. But he came out of a guy's dick. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I take that money. I mean, I might, I might just say, hey, we can overpower this guy. He's in, like, some fucking robotic contraption that can barely move. And then let's just get the fuck out of here. They just swarm that guy and kick his ass. Right! The big thing is that they have a contract, and it's up at 12 o'clock, that, like, at midnight. But there's a clause in it that if he needs to extend it, uh... They have to comply in case of an emergency, or else, it, and if they don't do it, they'll be tried for mutiny and fucking shot. I, sure. That's what he says. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm just thinking back to, like, Demolition Man, when it's like, oh, you can't kill me because I activated you, and it's like, hey, somebody else kill this guy then. Well, I'm just trying to be a little contrary here. I understand why they agreed to what they agreed to. I just think, hey, magical guy that came out of Kowalski's penis... I'll sit this one out. I'll be in my fucking room or whatever. The colonel's like, fine, but if anything happens to my man, I'm coming back here and I'm gonna, your ass is grass. If you even have an ass. That was a very accurate depiction, actually. <laughs> There's some good joke. He got, he's got some good fucking bangers. My head's cold. God damn it, give me a goddamn uh, uh, beanie or something. Wow, why haven't I been wearing this the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Cover up my mental hole. I also just wanted to like, just say real quick, and then we can move on from this scene. 
They spend like a solid minute, a boring ass minute, debating the semantics of this contract. They literally go through everyone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If we do this, we get 5% of all the drilling uh, from the mining on this planet. Oh, no, make it 2.5. All right, deal. It's like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Are you killing the leprechaun or not? They're also like, they go through everybody and they ask everybody what they think. And it's like, what? It's just yay or nay. That's it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we, maybe. That's a lot of money. Then it's basically the scene from Aliens when they enter the hive. Oh, yeah, straight up. There's like a quick th throwaway, because sometimes we cut to Lep, and he's just like talking to himself. <laughs> yeah, limbering in a corner to himself. He decides to kill the princess after he's done, because once he marries her and then becomes king, he kills her and then takes over the universe, something, something. Right, because he doesn't want to share his uh, gold with her. Y you know, her father isn't king of the universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, like, people don't give a shit about this guy. I'm the king now. You're a king of a planet with 10 people. Damn! <laughs> so there's like a quick scene where Mittenhand like cracks the code on regenerating himself from her blood, from the princess's blood, because they like take a skin cell sample and like mix it with the blood and like grow a finger or some shit. So he's like, finally I'll have the body! So while he's doing that, we have this whole like little side quest with uh, Miguel Nunez and Danny, where Danny's like, oh, he's like, we, we should just hide, basically doing what I'm saying they should have fucking done, except being way more cowardly about it. Yeah, because they go off together, and then uh, Reed, and, Reed and Books go off together, and, like, Leprechaun, like, handcuffs Reed to a fucking bookshelf and throws fire at them or something? Yeah, well, this is when he shoots shit out of his finger, and then he snaps his fingers, and an explosion goes off. It's really unclear. He doesn't kill anybody, though. No, and then they, like, Batman up to a catwalk and get away from him or something. And they have this weird forced sexual tension where he's holding her, and they're, like, staring at each other in the eye. And she's like, you can put me down now, books. He's like, oh, 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 oh yeah, of course, oh. Oh, there's, there, there, there's Sergeant Hooker, okay, oh, yeah, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> yeah, they regroup. And they're like, where the fuck is Nunez and or Miguel and fucking Danny? <laughs> Sticks and Danny. And, and to really just stretch this fucking reference even thinner, they of course have like indicators like an alien to fucking find Lubden. What are they tracking? His Irish heritage? His... <laughs> Does he have a potato in his pocket that they're tracking? Like, what? how the fuck are they tracking this guy? I love these motion trackers because they're just, like, floodlight flashlights. Like, those big motherfuckers with, like, the fucking giant battery that goes in them. Like, is there a shamrock beeping on that fucking uh, indicator? Yeah. <laughs> That's the marker. The, yeah, L meter. This room has insufficient luck. He wasn't here. It's reading Irish, man. Look. The, the gauge is like, it's just a title Leprechaun. Leprechaun 1, Leprechaun 2, Leprechaun 3. Back to the hood. <laughs> returns. <laughs> oh, no. He's gone. Returns. It's Origins. It's fine. He's not going to show up. Oh, man. That's even worse. And, of course, Leprechaun's in the fucking air shaft. In the uh, air vents, too. <laughs> yeah. He, John McClane in it up. <laughs> Dude, what? Like, he... Here's the thing with this, and like it happens a lot in like some of these movies. He has a singular goal, and yet he just spends like hours seemingly just fucking about. That's the thing, like he just gets his kicks from just like fucking with people and like killing people. He can't put blinders on and just do the thing. He's like, well, I, I, I'm here. I might as well, you know, just unload a little bit. I, g I gotta kill people. It's part of the uh, Lubden curse. You know, remember a very unlucky leprechaun? He hadn't eaten a fucking four-leaf clover in a hundred years because he was fucking off being lazy. <laughs> that's one thing that's consistent. He's a serial procrastinator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's just a procrastinator. <laughs> Did you get the gold, Lubden? No, I... Not yet. What have you been doing? I've been looking for it, sort of, question mark. Well, then we have Danny, who, by the way, his last name is O'Grady, in case that's, I guess, a reference to the first one, if you care. Daniel O'Grady, yeah. I love this scene. It's so they can sing Danny Boy. That's basically what this scene is for. <laughs> So Warwick can sing it. Is it. Warwick sings a couple times in this, and I kind of love it. <laughs> it's like creepy and funny at the same time. Exactly. Danny walks into this fucking, uh, like, 
boiler room. Yeah, the Fre- Freddy and Munchie are hanging out in there. Yeah, it's the it's a Freddy Munchie universe in this room. What are you doing here? <laughs> hey, we're playing car. We're having a sing off. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. How you doing today? Hey, I hear Renepicon singing over there. Is can we sing together? Making a duet. Hey, making a duet. A Danny boy. To a mortal figure singing. This fucking safety video comes on. <laughs> this monitor, and he's like, he's like, hi, Danny boy. This this was like hardcore Elm Street, so it's like Freddy really is there, it feels like. Oh, yeah. Welcome to primetime, bitch. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Here comes your big break. Nintendo does what, nin- what say don't. Ah, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Let me re-say that. Uh, <laughs> he's, now you're playing with Freddy. Now you're playing with Lubden. Leprechaun's like cutting off his fingers and then lights one on fire. And of course, Warwick's a fucking delight to watch do all that weird shit. He's also, um, he's singing Danny Boy. And when he gets to, you know, the pipes, the pipes are calling. He's just kind of like tappity tapping on some pipes, luring this idiot over. Oh man, he like, he tries to make a deal with him. Right. And this guy's like, yeah, yeah, I, I could work with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this this guy melts. He's like, I don't want to do anything except survive this encounter. So whatever I got to do. And Warwick's like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> but he's still willing to shoot Lubden. He has the gun trained on him. So fuck him. The fucking long game for this scene is great because Lubden literally lures him out. He's like, we got to talk face to face. He fucking coyotes him, okay? Like... <laughs> <laughs> walks into the middle of the room and Leprechaun hits a fucking button and this giant crate falls on Dan and crushes him. Yeah, he's paced. It might as well have said Acme across the side of this thing, okay? Complete with simply smashing and then runs off screen. <laughs> And yeah, like it, like it's what's it called? He like pops to the top, and he has like pieces of it in his mouth or his teeth, and he's just got birdies flying around him. This is also where we 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 flash back to Mittenhand and Harold, uh, basically working on this concoction still, and. You know, Harold keeps kissing his ass even though he's getting insulted nonstop. He's like, well, I love that you hate me. I still love you. He's like, ah, you moron. (laughs) I I despise your very existence. I hate you on a cellular level. I hate Curse of the Jade Scorpion. Also, your spiders. I don't like them. Get them off the ship. I don't like spiders or scorpions. Why do you have to have such weird pets? What's wrong with you? Why do you have these on a fucking space station? (laughs) <laughs> Very true, yeah. That's like the last place I want a fucking spider. Because, well, the moment I see a spider close enough to an airlock, I'm opening it. I don't, <laughs> I don't care. He has tarantulas and scorpions for whatever reason, because he's a fetishist. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a weird guy. I like feet and bugs. I smell feet, and I like bugs. I, wear, I, I stand so my head is always below my shoulders. This is where you also get that little lore dump we were talking about earlier where he talks about, I was gonna be the, or- the original uh, computer with an organic structure. I was going to make the first Krang body. We took the <laughs> neck out from this boy Job who lives on the net. Me and the Shredder were going to rule Dimension X. We had Seamus and that guy from Malcolm in the Middle. We turned them into a hog and a rhino. It was great. <laughs> I broke the deal off and I heard he was beaten by a rat and four turtles and pushed into a trash can and murdered by a rogue hockey player. Uh, what a chump. What a, and then he came back and did nothing. <laughs> he made babies. Little did I know that my associate crook Shanks was working in secret with uh, Mr. Buchanan and he knew the uh, metal fetishist and he turned me into this. I was a spam experiment but I feel reign supreme once more. And this is about the time when uh, we cut back to the Marines and uh, Dolores is excised from the film. Man, let me tell you something. She fucking... Okay, uh, Lubden, like, traps her on a catwalk and isolates her from the rest of the group and she shoots the shit out of him and he explodes again. Yeah, this is this is Lubden explosion number two. <laughs> I think it's like five in the series by now. Yeah, and like also, I I want to talk about the, some of the deaths of this movie because man, they suck. Yeah. You think so? This this is fucking. I I I, I the deaths in this movie are like. Friday 8 level of lethargic and unimpactful. Oh, you mean like Dolores' death, you mean? Oh, I think pretty much all of them. Like, even like, like I said, Homeboy had a fucking leprechaun grow out of his dick and nothing happened. His pants just stretched. Yeah. And this, like, it's just a weird cutaway and like they find her like a few minutes later uh, after she fell like a thousand feet and she has one more stupid line. <laughs> oh, Christ almighty. I was like, that, it was so stupid. And then someone else like has 
the most cartoonishly silly death even for this fucking movie. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's just, like, kind of talk about that briefly, that scene, and then we can kind of move on. Because she gets dropped off the catwalk, and, you know, first Loveden's hitting her with the shillelagh, and then he's grabbing the fingers, doing this little piggy went to market, and then drops her. This fu- it looks like the fucking shaft that the empire or that that the emperor gets thrown down <laughs> yeah it does i thought i thought it was a big like electrical grid because it was all that mist so it made it look like it was something else entirely and then like they didn't even show her falling it's just she goes ah, and then just cut away and then like they're like oh no let's go find dolores i guess and they go on a fucking side quest i'm like she's dead who gives a shit she should be a fucking grease spot dude they find her yeah yeah they find like like apparently she just dinged a pipe on the way down because it's like a little blood spot that's got a little bit of drips on it but otherwise she seems pretty okay oh 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 and real quick before we get any further from this this was that scene where he reforms from like a fucking foot to to scare her and that's what causes her to fly off the side of the railing of this catwalk so again he's just fucking with them because like he could have regenerated at any time but he decided to hang out in this guy's dick <laughs> right until the until the right moment <laughs> yeah th- th- look I know, it's Leprechaun 4 in space, but this is stupid because she, like, jumps up from being dead and she's, like, she grabs Reed and sh- and she's like, she's, like, kill him for me. And then she dies, for real. Kill me! Why me for me? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Dolores. Your head would be in so many pieces. It's just stupid, like you guys are talking about. She falls, like, at, oh, like maybe a thousand feet, hits her head, and has enough energy to get that line out. No, she's fucking dead. She's D.E.D., man. The fall would kill you before you even hit, uh, landed. But, um, like, also, having seen Event Horizon and having seen that one fall in that movie that, that girl takes, nothing else compares. So <laughs> if it doesn't stack up to that, it's shit, because that woman dies so fucking hard. Nothing in this movie stacks up to Event Horizon. Let's just get that out of the way. Well, yeah. <laughs> I will say Warwick Davis in Event Horizon would have probably added something, but uh... that's that's who's screaming at Morgan Free- at Morgan Free- Lawrence Fishburne the whole time. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. That's why Sam Neill rips his eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> Shut him up! Shut him up! He just keeps seeing the starfish. Oh my god, the starfish is swinging around all over the place. Do you see? <laughs> Dolores like uh, jumps up and does that fucking stupid line, and now all of a sudden Tina is like a badass, and you know she's like, I hate guns, like earlier in the movie, and now she's like picking up an assault rifle and she's like let's go kick some fucking ass or whatever he shot my hair (laughs) well it's it's because they like kind of try to set up that these two characters have some camaraderie because there's a scene earlier in the film where they talk before they kind of go after loved in on on the planet and a couple other little scenes i I feel like they try they just are not very good at the actual execution of what they're trying to do the the filmmakers we lost our our tough female lead so we need another one so let's just shove her in that one too right, that's what it feels like yeah they're just like hi new dolores uh, my name's tina okay, that's right new dolores yeah basically <laughs> hi blonde dolores i i, I don't know I, I just feel like that concept on paper isn't necessarily bad like it can be done well but it is not done well here at all there's no growth let's go not billy piper <laughs> Uh, bad Wolf. Uh, here we go. Bad, bad, let's go Bad Wolf. But you're right. It, it is kind of out of left field. I mean, again, what else are you going to do with this character? She either is just going to continue to cower, or I guess she's got to, you know, grab a weapon and, and help. The funny thing is she becomes three tropes throughout this movie. She is nerd girl, and then she is badass girl, and then she is girl being stripped by villain. Yep. That's a later point in the movie. <laughs> yes. It's a hell, I guess that's the evolution, right? I was going to say she doesn't grow at all, but... <laughs> <laughs> she just fucking smash smashes to the next generation of 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 character. So apparently, Leprechaun can smell this princess. Gross and weird. And uh, I love it because he rolls up on uh, Mittenhand and and Harold, and right, there's like a doorbell for this laboratory. <laughs> It's so weird. I love it. You hear like a fucking ding dong and Mittenhand's like, okay, here, I'll go get the dog. See who's at the door. Doom sounds for doors, but a literal like basic ass doorbell ring for the door. Okay. Is it trick or treat this Harold? Sir, it's, uh, uh, it's September and we're also in space. So Leprechaun turns himself into Tina Reed, the blonde, and 
he's bare ass she's bare ass naked and he's like oh she's like oh my god they stole my clothes and they left me out here of course creepy old harold's like Ooh. he's like oh that's, i get to see a naked lady for the first time in my life i mean he was looking at the princess when she was ko'd unfortunately so second time yeah maybe yeah so he opens the door and um guess what it's the lep he doesn't look down just like in baby's day yet he doesn't look below the knees <laughs> <laughs> the baby's crawling around and uh, Lubden fucking KOs his fucking nutsack. What is that kid's name in Baby's Day Out again? Binky. Baby Bink. So we're just calling it Binky Vision. That's what it's called. Like <laughs> Bink Vision. Yeah. Bink Vision. Like you can't see below your waist. <laughs> yeah, because you're right, Joe. He, he basically appears and stabs this guy in the dick with his fucking shillelagh. He fucking just, I, he fucking, I don't know. He home runs this guy's nutsack. Does he stab him or does he just hook him with the top of the cane? No, he just hits him in the balls with the he hits him in the balls with the cane. He's like, hold this for me, and then so he's like obliged, and then just like just sits there and just writhes in pain for five minutes. I looked at it as he hit him so hard with a blunt object that it's sticking in him that he is not getting up, but he does. No, because he just hits him in the balls with it. He doesn't stab him, and the and he's like squeezing this thing in his legs, and like a knife pops out the end. Yeah, the one he used to kill Mooch. Yeah. Um, and he's like you know ran into mitten hand and mitten hand. Real <laughs> Mittenhand sees uh, Harold stumbling in, so he's trying to keep him talking. I love this exchange between him and the leprechaun, because, like, Mittenhand's, like, laughing at him at first. He's like, you're so short. I thought you were a monster. Yeah, let's make this character even more unlikable. He's like, we're, we're the same, you know. We're monsters in my own way. And, uh, you know, what do you want, little man? And he's like, I want to be rich and powerful. I want to be a king. And I want people to respect me. And he's like, huh, respect. He's like, fear, my friend. Fear is what is what you'll get or, or how the universe works or some shit. Well, if he works for John Hurt, that lines up. It's straight up. That, there you go. I know a cabal of very evil men who you would fit in with nicely. Do you want to join the round table? Let me introduce you to my leader, Mr. Joe Buchanan. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, there they are. In the in the uh, post credit sequence, they form the fucking Buchanan of Doom. So then, while Mittenhand's kind of uh, distracting Lubden, Harold comes up from behind, and Mittenhand's like, "Oh well, too bad you won't live long enough to see your uh, riches come to bloom." And then he gets stabbed in the through the stomach and out the back. And uh, me sitting at home saying, "Okay, big fucking whoop," but these two guys are like, "Yeah, we beat him. We beat the leprechaun." I'm like, "I." I, I have you guys been paying attention? Yeah, you, you've you now blown him up twice. <laughs> and he just walked it off. Right! And the way that he dispatches Harold is the silliest, stupidest shit. No, it's amazing. Now you think, so there's a train with all these chemicals on it. And he like wills it, he like levitates it. And you think that... You know, he's going to throw these chemicals at him and he's going to, like, melt into a pile of shit. Nope. Um, this fucking tray just starts spinning in midair and smashes Harold's face against the wall. He dropped dead Fred's this motherfucker. This looked like they plucked it from Hot Shots Part 2. Like, what is that? Like, the human head doesn't work that way. I'd rather see him spin it like a fucking razor blade and chop him in half. That would have been a lot better. It look, yeah, right. I'm with Sean on that one when he fucking, when Fred gets his head slammed in the fridge. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Except this. This guy's not an imaginary friend and can't really bounce back. But his fucking head is flat as a pancake. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, yeah, this one dude. It's that soldier in Hot Shots 2 gets hit with a grenade launcher and they pan back. And he's just he's just splattered clay against the wall. And he's like, well, that's one hell of a gun. <laughs> yes. So this guy dies uh, and uh, Lubden just keeps threatening uh, Mittenhand. He's like, yeah, wait till you see what I got in store for you, buddy. Oh, man. He makes a fucking creepy crawler's cocktail for this guy. <laughs> that's yeah. Because the princess wakes up and she's like, I had a dream that he was taking blood from me. Kill him. And she's like, okay. He's like, all right, let's do this. I got a bad vibe. Dude, this, he sings again, Warwick Davis. He's like, oh, creatures great and small or some shit and picks up this fucking spider and this scorpion and puts that 
and her blood in a blender and puts this fucking cocktail together. Yeah, he, he force feeds this guy uh, blue milk. He fucking injects this guy in the head with bantha milk. And and knowing full well that this combination, this cocktail, this leprechaun cocktail is going to transform him in some way. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, fuck this guy. No, yeah, fuck this guy. And then, uh, and then yeah, everybody shows up just a little bit too late and uh, we get another fucking shootout again. You'll never take me alive, Marines! While this fucking, like, cyborg, uh, bad guy thing is, like, convulsing with this fucking liquid going into his skull. There's a sight gag there where the leprechaun, like, mimics him, like, convulsing, and it fucking gets me every time. Um, and, th- and then they keep going after, uh, Lubden because they think that the princess is a hostage. Like, they don't understand that she is willingly going with him. Yeah, and we also, before we forget, there's a fucking another, there's another aliens thing here because he shoots, like, a fucking vial of acid and it, like, sprays on Reed and she's like, oh, get off the body! Body armor or whatever. Oh my god, this pissed me off, okay? Because if you know anything about acid and how its chemical composure works and like what to use in case you get splashed with something, you're never supposed to grab water because you have no idea if that water is going to react with the, the acid and make it worse. How does he even know that's water? It's just a giant beaker filled with liquid. <laughs> <laughs> he just grabs a giant fucking pitcher of shit. Miguel Nunez just starts dumping this on her. It's more acid. He just pours the hair. <laughs> yeah, it burns her fucking arms off. She just dissolves instantly. Ah! Oh my god, imagine. That'd be hilarious. So they go into like this broom closet where they think she's being held captive. And, you know, I joked that it was like Druidia from Spaceballs, but it's actually called Dominium. And I think they're trying to play up that she's like part of some, like, dominatrix-ass race, because she, uh, you know, she comes out and basically says, oh, I'm not a hostage, I, you know, I'm with this guy, and she, like, pulls her top off, and she's like, this is the last thing you're gonna ever see, so you better drink it in. I forgot about that, and I was like, is she hypnotizing them with her tits or something? Or what's going on? Yeah, because, like, okay, if it was hypnosis, fine, but she does it, and everyone's like, Okay, so that was a thing that happened. Yeah, that was, like, the, the movie needed boob quota. Yeah. Man, put your clothes on. Yeah, Reed is like, well, on her planet, if you if if royalty shows you their boobs, that means you're dead. Yeah, it's a death sentence. So it's, so it's, it's this weird version of, like, the black spot? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the death sentence in 12 systems! You've been, I saw a woman's titties once, and that was... <laughs> I saw all the boobies. I saw 12 tits. And even though they've blown Lubden up multiple times and uh, shot him and, and basically nothing's happened, they they still think that they can stop him. And uh, nope, they, they take control of uh, Hooker. Lubden puts fucking bombs all over him and is like, all right, don't move a muscle. We're taking this guy with us. But then mind controls him? Question mark? Uh, okay, this is one of my... I know, like, we've been talking about this for almost two hours, and it already sounds ridiculous, but this is where the shark finally jumped in the movie. <laughs> the leprechaun jumped, yeah. The, the the pulse of this movie starts to slow right around here, and then, like, within five minutes of this scene, I was like, I'm fucking done. Because they, they take the sergeant, and they basically make him go with them as a hostage, but he is overplaying the military thing, and I guess part of it is supposed to be he's shouting and marching really loud so that they always have a beat on his location. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think, I don't know. The The strange part to me is that they, like, bring him to the lounge and then put him in drag and have him do, like, a show. Yeah. This whole fucking sequence is unnecessary because it goes to the weirdest places. Like, at some point, he's doing this fucking drag thing and pulls out nunchucks from his purse like <laughs> and then like tina's like my god he's going to kill us i'm like what do you mean he can't even swing those things properly what do you have? just push him over he's not doing anything there's a couple funny lines but like it's just too fucking long well and it's also like all these like homophobic jokes are kind of peppered in there where it's like well now that he's like doing this drag thing he's like really effeminate and he's like I don't know, you kind of got to see it. I don't really want to, like, dwell on it too long, but it kind of really took me out of the movie. I was like, why do we have these random, like, anti-drag queen, like, jokes, but also it's, like, 
I, it's, it, I really am ha struggling to wrap my head around the whole scene, to be perfectly honest. Wouldn't it be funny if we had a really butch army guy dressed like a lady? There you go. He keeps, like, crying randomly. It's it's really, like, odd. It's the, you know, the weakness to machismo, would, like, in this movie's perspective. Like, oh, on the opposite side of the spectrum is complete and utter weakness and, you know, and just cracking under pressure because girls are soft and frail. And, like, it's just, it's bottom of the barrel, like, like borderline misogynist jokes. And they're, they, first of all, there's way too many of them because the sequence goes on for an unbearably long amount of time. Yeah. Right. Because they keep cutting back to this scene and Lubden and the princess trying to escape. And they, the really the only important part about that is Lubden wants to get his gold from this hangar bay and uh, that she tells him is there because she wants his money and wants him dead also. Yeah. Um, and then as they're kind of like bickering back and forth, we get the climax of this fight where nobody wants to fight the guy because he's their sergeant. And then Teen eventually is like, fuck this, and coaxes him. He's got a rifle at this point with a bayonet that he's threatening him with. And uh, she gets him to basically bull charge her, and he hits an electrical outlet, gets electrocuted, and then, like, the metal plate in his head explodes, and he's a robot, apparently! He's more machine now than man. He was a good friend. I set him on fire. It was good memories. <laughs> Like, to your point earlier, Connor, like, after that big, like, war story where, you know, um, Miguel Nunez is telling, like, how he got the plate in his head, did he just die and they just were like, this guy's a good soldier, let's put a fucking AI chip in him and get him back out there. I guess. Yeah, that's, it's super weird, because, like, I'm all for, like, weird cybernetic and, like, augmentations on character, like, it's cool, but at some point you're telling me, like, Oh, yeah, he lost half of his skull, and we just stuck some metal there, and he's fine. Like, no, you didn't. He's dead. What you're looking at is not a man. <laughs> but it's another alien reference, too, because it's like, we gotta have a cyborg because it's like ripping off alien. Did you know that he was an artificial person? Oh, shit, Bishop, you're an android? <laughs> burr, 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 burr. You didn't tell me there was an android on board. Yeah, like, the only thing missing is him getting back up and shoving a fucking rolled-up newspaper down Tina's face. Like, that's the only thing he, like, we're just shy of that. Guess he didn't like the cornbread, either. And him going, blah, 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 <laughs> yeah, it looks like they put him in like Joe Petto's workshop and just I, and I grabbed some of this and I grabbed some of this and I grabbed some of this and just shoved it in his head and that was it. You see, Sarge was a really good guy and then he beat up some toy maker and beat him to death. We had to <laughs> we had to kind of cover that up. Now we're at my one of my favorite parts of the movie. So okay, you're gonna have to explain that more, otherwise I may have to disagree with you. Okay, because we get like a full on like Gremlins two fucking strike or uh, Mohawk turns into the fucking giant spider thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, you mean we get the alien queen? Like, cause that's what this is. It's the spider gremlin. It's the alien queen, and it's the fucking uh the and Jeff Goldblum's the fly, all in one fucking guy. Here, here's the thing with this, like. I would have liked it a lot more if it had A, shown up way earlier, and B, were an entirely different movie. Because up to this point, this movie has not charted into anything, like, I would say extreme or risky in terms of material. And something like, here comes some gross body horror, weren't you waiting for it? I was like, no, you've done nothing to set this up. In fact, I, I don't want this here. I kind of love it, dude. I don't like it at all. I think it's fucking so out of place, even for this movie. Also, it, it's, I can't not... Think about the fact that there's some producer who worked for Barbara Streisand who failed upward in Hollywood who was around his like in your third act, you gotta have a giant spider. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. It looks really cool. Yeah. If it happened 30 minutes earlier, I might have liked it more, but it just kept making me think of Hellraiser 2 with the fucking doctor. Sure. Show, I mean, granted, Hellraiser 2 sets that character up way better than this character is set up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, for Shenard, it makes sense because his trajectory is obviously he's doomed and something he's going to do something terrible. This is like, surprise. It's like, you didn't set this up at all. Well, this is just, it's, it's like literally here to do fly jokes. Like... <laughs> <laughs> one after another. <laughs> right. Th this one, his trajectory is he's going to get the fucking vial of immortal life and become a human, but, you know, Lubden gets in the way. So, I mean, I get it, but I just couldn't help, like, I mean, maybe it's not fair for me to compare to a fucking Clive Barker uh, uh, movie, more or less, but I was just like, why are we introducing, like, I get that this guy was basically the secondary antagonist, but why is he now this fucking creature that uh, just unbalances, like, I was expecting him to get fought by somebody in a fucking in uh, mech. Yeah, right? Or, uh, like, Battle of the Leprechaun? That would have been interesting. Right, right! I, I don't know. It's just, uh... 
It's so out of left field, and like, yeah, it's cool, but like, why? I don't know. Well, I don't know, because it's Leprechaun 4. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's like at the end of, I don't know, like a like a more tame sci-fi movie, suddenly like, here's some Zoonoids. <laughs> Oh, you think? There you go. Yeah, like, like, like Jodie Foster in Contact suddenly has to fight the fucking fish man. Like, that's <laughs> how it feels like. It's just so out of, it just doesn't, doesn't belong there. While all this insanity is going on, Lubden is, is basically bickering still with his fucking future wife. And basically because he finds the gold and it's all shrunk down. And she's like, that's it? And he's like, well, you know, they must have shrunk it down or something. I don't know. And she's like, ah, you know, I could find anybody. I don't need you, Lubby. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, remember when I touched your face earlier? You know, the, the movie dumpster guys, they didn't talk about it, but I touched your face earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's a meta narrative now. Holy shit. Uh-oh. He's like, here, look at this mirror. And she's got boils and zits all over his face, uh, all over her face. Yeah, because she's like, I'm the most beautiful woman that ever lived or whatever. Right. I mean, they play up her sexuality heavy duty throughout, and then the whole boob. Uh, death sentence thing, sure. And to, like, just to add that additional wrinkle, like, Leprechaun, like, sets a fucking Resident Evil countdown destruction sequence. do 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 Get the Mo Discs! And then he sets, like, a green force field around the only escape ship because he wants to use it himself. Yeah, so they can't leave. Yeah, and it looks like it looks like the fucking background of, like, an old, like, a Jaguar game. Oh, it sucks. It looks like 32X compressed video in the middle of your screen CGI. <laughs> Like Sewer Shark or something like that. So Diet Stallone and, and Reed go down to the cargo bay and they send Miguel Nunez to shut down the fucking countdown. Because he's the tech guy, I guess. Yeah, he gets abducted by the dock and like puts him in like a fucking meat cocoon or some shit. But hangs him directly above like the, con the computer panel so that he could still kind of work on it. Where he needs to be. But also like Mitten Spider, as he's now referring to himself, like also is aware that the, the shuttle's gonna explode in, like, less than 20 minutes, and it's like, no, no, my research, it's all gonna be ruined, ah, flies, I need fly, no, my research, I'm losing my sanity, flies, it, it, it's a weird uh, spiral for this character. Have you ever seen David Cronenberg's The Fly? He's consuming my insides and... <laughs> My fingernails would fall off if I had any. <laughs> My teeth fell out. I can only eat by throwing up on it now. I'm just thinking of what's-his-face from fucking Howard the Duck. He's just like, yep, and it's eating my insides. And I'm now an alien. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Jennings. So while he's getting captured, the princess gets knocked out, and basically you find out, like, oh, it was just an illusion. She doesn't actually have boils all over her face. Mm. But then, like Joe said, uh, Diet Diet Sly shows up with with uh, Reeves, and somehow, some way, Lubden gets hit by the shrink ray, and they're like, huh, he looks like he's in pain. Did you do something? No. Did you do something? No. Huh kind of weird and they just watch <sighs> as it, i watch this on blu-ray by the way i bought the collection of all the movies <laughs> oh man i had to rent it because i couldn't find it anywhere <laughs> i watched this in four three aspect ratio <laughs> it looks really fucking good but this effect they just must have just said you know what we're not fucking gonna really go crazy here because he balloons he he goes honey i shrunk the kid levels honey i shrunk the lupton he explodes <laughs> and grows like 20 or 30 feet tall honey i blew up the Lubden. Yeah, I was like, honey, I blew up the Leprechaun. Yeah, exactly, but it, I gotta say, the effect, it doesn't look great to begin with, but when you're watching Blu-ray quality film on a 4K TV, and basically the whole movie looks really good, and you see this Lubden who looks just fucking pasted in from a VHS tape <laughs> as he's growing bigger with these scan lines and grain all over him, I'm like, I low budget, but damn, does that look bad. It looked bad on the VHS, put it that way. <laughs> I didn't doubt it. Blu-ray is the the unintended villain of old special effects because, it, like, you watch anything on Blu-ray, like, watching the Turtles movie on Blu-ray is a sin because you're like, I can see every flaw in perfect detail. <laughs> <laughs> There's a man in Donatello's mouth. But he gets gigantic, like a rancor, basically. Oh, yeah, and or, uh, like, a queen alien. You could say. Yeah. Also, again, uh, Diet Stallone takes off his fucking shirt so you can see his ripped chest. What the fuck? Uh, why? I don't know. Because he gets hurt. He gets a wound on his arm and he's like, ah, uh, 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 rips off his body armor. 
rips off his like jacket, <laughs> rips off his shirt, and then does nothing else. He's like, I am now shirtless. A little something for the ladies, dude. He does nothing the rest of the movie. He trips, and he almost gets stepped on at one point. There's... Lots of shots of him running like he's a character in Assassin's Creed, and that's basically what he does for the rest of the film. This is entirely too long, this whole sequence of, like, Leprechaun looking for this guy in this cargo bay. This is when I was making, like, I was like, I am checking out. I'm like, I can't, I felt like I was drowning. Like, it's just, I- <laughs> Well, because they're trying to do these, like, two plot lines at the same time, and, you're, and you gotta just... Because it's like, he's hiding from Lubden, who's trying to find him in this fucking, you know, uh, this cargo bay. And he can hear fucking Miguel Nunez on the headset that's like 50 feet away from him. So I don't even know how he heard it, but yelling, I need a password! I can't get in! I need a damn password! Oh yeah, that too. And Tina's like crawling through the air shaft trying to get to him while she's getting attacked by this fucking spider monster. Okay, within five minutes of each other, Leprechaun looks at his dick... And he's like, wow, I got a huge dick because I'm gigantic. Yeah, that happens. And a beat later, Reeds is like crawling through the air ducts to get to Miguel. And the fucking mitten spider rips th- rips a grate open and grabs her by the ass and rips her pants off. Oh, right. Yes. And then... Now her ass is hanging out for the rest of the movie. She's in like a leotard. Yes, it's weird. And it's like incredibly sexual. Again, I am not some like prude person. I really don't give a fuck at all what these people wear. But like, why? Why is she wearing this, like, fucking leotard that, ex- that that accentuates her fucking vagina? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's difference between, like, doing it to in service of something, like a scene or a character or a motivation. Sure. And then there's these instances where we, we talk about all the time. It's just gratuity. And gratuity and stuff like this, it doesn't do anything. It's At this point, especially in this movie, you're just wasting our time. Like, just do something important. Get this fucking shit show over with. It's kind of funny when the pants, get, where the fucking spider, like, eats the pants and then spits it out. I thought that was funny. As I'm literally, as we're complaining about it, I'm putting the pieces together in my head and realizing, you know what? Now I remember why they did that. Because in Alien 1, that's basically what Sigourney Weaver has on at the end when she's fucking trying to get away. Okay. Remember when Ripley gets into the suit? in your underwear and then blasts it out of the fucking airlock? Well, it's kind of like that. You know what? I, I, I'll save it for my review. <laughs> not only... Not only... Okay, so we're, 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 we're not quite done with the alien references yet, but she gets to the fucking... <laughs> we're close. Yeah, she gets to the fucking control room to save Miguel, and she has to, f- like, fend off the fucking uh, mitten spider, and Miguel tips her off to a thing of liquid nitrogen, and she fucking T-1000s this fucking spider monster. Yeah, as she sprays him, he goes, I'm invincible! <laughs> <laughs> just clicking that pen, just clicking that pen. Yeah. This fucking thing's frozen, and it's and it does the whole fly thing, like, help me, help me! Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. Where was Vincent Price? Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, so then she's like, I'm sorry, Dr. Mittenhand, and then she just, like, unloads with this fucking blaster on him. Oh, hasta la vista, baby. This thing fucking explodes into a bunch of shit. Meanwhile, this alarm has just been going off for the last, like, ten minutes of the movie, like, five minutes remaining until self-destruction. Please get on a shuttle now. I mean, I guess we could just wrap this up in a bow, because, like, Books and the Princess are, like, in, like, a little shuttle, uh, or a cargo thing away from Leprechaun and then Reed's like opens up the cargo bay doors. Hal opened the pod bay doors. <laughs> he fucking gets sucked out like the queen alien. Dude, get away from her, you Leprechaun. And there he goes. It is offensively similar. Like, it's it's the same, like, barring, like, logistical placements and, you know, the overall look, it's the same shit. I, I like that they even include the shot where she... Well, she, in, in Aliens, the, the queen is holding on with both hands on the bay doors. They have London do the same shot. <laughs> <laughs> Verbatim. There's no Reebok for her to, for him to grab, though. No. No, that's true. Or, or, or bisected Lance Hendrickson. That too, yeah. So he gets shot into space, and I... <sighs> The effects are bad in this movie, but this really is bad. He explodes for a third time in this film. After he does, like, some weird Matrix, like, warping effect in space. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, I guess it's it's supposed to be, like, uh, spaghettification when you go into, like, you know, a a zero uh, air cold space environment. It looks like dog shit. (laughs) I was going to say, is that the uh, Majin Buu part of him trying to transform but can't because now he's in the cold, uh, deep, uh, airless space, and so he just explodes with no air. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
And uh, our final three characters, they all come in for a huddle and they hug and uh, everything's all hunky-dory. They won. Uh, let's just forget about the princess that's still somewhere on the ship. Uh, but we still got to fucking deactivate the, the countdown, the fucking explosion, the, the, the detonation. And uh, they can't think of the password. Nobody can think of the password. We're coming down to literal seconds. And they're like, what did he, what did he say? What was that thing he said? Oh, that's got to be it. Wizard. I'm not a bad man. I'm just a bad wizard. I am Iron Man. Done. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. And it works. And then they all hug. They have a big huddle. They're hugging and shit. And then Lumpkin's, I assuming still gigantic hand is floating in space and comes up to like a port fucking window and just like, like in like a claymation kind of effect, like the fucking middle finger rolls out at them. Oh man! And I gave the screen one right back because at this point I'm furious. I was like, "Fuck you too, movie!" Like, remind me too, please, because I'm gonna do that scene from Deep Blue Sea when the shark is coming at the giant window. <laughs> yes. But I'm gonna replace it with Lubden's finger, like giving him the finger. They see it, and one of them's like, "Yeah, right back at you, pal." Like they're not concerned that this thing's still moving out there. They're like, "Yeah, another problem for another day." Did we forget this guy just? regenerates yeah that too never mind that he has agency over his his dismembered limbs and he's in proximity of you and also he's gigantic <laughs> Like, why couldn't this, why couldn't he just regenerate and hang on to the ship? If he floats towards your big old window right there and flicks the window, you're all dead. So, yeah. <laughs> then it's credits. Uh, where are we putting this? I kicked this movie out of the same fucking airlock. <laughs> God, I, okay. So, I wasn't as, like, miserable as I usually was during movies like this, where it's, like, uh, Unlucky Leprechaun or, uh, you know, Munchie, something like that. Because it's, it some point decides like who gives a shit and puts things like mitten hands in there seeing the fucking leprechaun engage in like gunfights is surreal and ridiculous and very amusing but the last five to ten minutes are so fucking goddamn boring and drawn out i was like i fucking hate this movie now go <laughs> like it became it, it's it went from this mildly charming like movie i could probably maybe you know I didn't care for it, but I didn't hate it. And then because the ending is such a fucking drag, I was like, no, nah, I'm done. I don't want to ever go through this ever again. <laughs> hated it uh this is on the shelf i mean it's it's one of those films you know i'm I, I i tell you guys all the time i'm a completist but this isn't one of those things where i'm like fuck I, I do i have to have that on the shelf you know what i mean to go with everything but i actually don't hate this movie i think it's fine uh it's the fourth movie in a leprechaun series that should have been done after the first one even though I really like the second one, uh, it's my favorite of the sequels. But, like, Connor, you just said it perfectly. Who gives a fuck? Because they just went fucking bonkers with this. And it works for me because it's just it's just a ton of fun. It's just batshit stupid fun. Um, I think uh, Miguel Nunez is great in it. Tim... Uh, I forget his last name, uh, whatever. The, the the sergeant guy, he's fucking funny as hell. Uh, and Warwick is bringing the goods just just as well as everything else. And um, even the guy, even Dr. Mittenhand is fucking funny as shit. It's a gratuitous ripoff of Aliens, and that's the charm for me for this fucking thing because it's a leprechaun movie that's just basically aliens with a fucking leprechaun. What else can I say about it? Um, I really like the effects a lot. I mean, you know, Gabe Bartalos is on the effects in this and, he, you know, he's always great. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fun as shit. It's not my favorite of the sequels, but it's a, it's a fun time, especially if you want to fire it up for St. Patrick's Day when you've already had a couple drinks and you've already gone through Leprechaun 1 through 3. This is a good way to end the night for sure. Yeah, you take that uh, green beer, you drink it, and you piss it out, and you piss on this fucking movie in the dumpster or in the alley, because this movie... Oh, no! It sucks. I'm sorry. It's in the dumpster. It goes into your dick, though? Uh, yeah, it could, you know, the... The movie's in my penis. I start pissing in an alley, and literally, you know, I don't know if I survive the uh, situation, but I end up with a, a copy of this film on the ground covered in my urine and possibly blood. <laughs> Maybe my body, even. 
Uh, my, my engorged body, you know, you don't see an exit wound, but you know I'm dead. Uh, listen, I get what you're saying, Joe. It's the fourth in a fucking Leprechaun series, and uh, God bless uh, Warwick Davis. Uh, he is the reason to watch these movies, good or bad. For sure. Um, and hey, you know, we talked about it in this episode. Like, once you go to space, it, you, you pretty much, if you haven't jumped the shark yet, now you have. And this this series had already kind of jumped it by the second or third film. So, it, you know, you know, jumping a bigger one, let's say. They were trying to close it, right? You know what I mean? Right. They, they were jumping a shark with another shark. Um, and then they did it again with the next series of movies. <laughs> Uh, what can I say? Like Connor kind of touched on the kills outside of one or two uh, really aren't that good. Like, I like the drop dead Fred kill because it's so ridiculous and, and really caught me off guard. But you also have like stuff where, you know, like we're talking about Dolores gets dropped off that catwalk and you really don't see anything. Not that I need to see her like hit the ground and turn into a puddle of fucking guts and, and gore. But, like, come on, she, it looks like she just hit her head. And it's, like, stuff like that. Like, again, low-budget movie, I understand. Like, I can only imagine how much some of these sets cost. But, I mean, now I'm kind of getting nitpicky here. At the end of the day, it's still a piece of shit. And uh, <laughs> no matter what I say is going to change that. If, if you like Warwick Davis, if you like these movies, generally speaking, it, it, it's, it, sure, watch it. At, le at least you got to know, right? We had to know. Uh, at least me and Connor did. I guess Joe kind of already knew what he was getting into here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I'm glad I watched it. I, I think those first two films are good. I, I especially like the original. So, yeah, it's in the dumpster. Um, you know, just like last year we talked about, well, we, I talked about Warwick uh, Davis, Lucky, Lubden, however you want to look at it, this character, pumping his spunk into Shamrock Shakes and selling them in a back alley, I think I said, or, or pulling them out of the dumpster is one or the other. I think it's a similar situation. Uh, this movie's getting pissed on and uh, <laughs> thrown in the dumpster. You could make that mess I just said into something, but basically it's in the dumpster next to Shamrock Shakes and it smells like urine. <laughs> I uh, don't need to see it again. In fact, uh, I'm going to take one of Daniel Baldwin's uh, tequila bottles from the statue out of the dumpster after I place this in there. And uh, that's got to be better, even though it's definitely made in America than this film. Hit yourself over the head with that bottle? Drink it and then hit myself over the head with it because I'm so embarrassed that I drank it. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, me personally, I feel like this is the last installment that you need to see if you're going to go through. Like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying like, that's it. Like, that's all you need to see. You don't need any uh, more than that. You don't need In the Hood. You don't need Back to the Hood. You don't need Origins. And you sure as fuck don't need Returns. Yeah. Yeah, Lubden, I think, will always have a place on this show, but I think this might be our last foray into at least uh, this series of films, at least for a damn long while. Yeah, so uh, don't forget, we got our Stone Cold commentary track uh, th on 316. There you go, we're going to be release releasing that soon, so... Uh, what? <laughs> one beer, two... No, not that Stone Cold, the other Stone Cold. What? That's going to be exclusive to Patreon, and... You know what else is exclusive to Patreon? Our watch-alongs. Come hang out with us. Uh, we'll have some beers, we'll have some laughs, and we'll watch some fucking Godzilla, baby. What do you guys say? Maybe even some King Kong. Possibly. Uh, sign me the fuck up. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess technically I'm signed up, but if you aren't... Uh, <laughs> You're part of it already. You just gotta sign up for that 5 or $10 tier, and you can read all about that on the uh, MD Guide that should be out now. Uh, speaking of Patreon, we always love to shout out our patrons... Uh, and thank them for all their support. And we'd love to give a shout out to Hunter Davenport, Brendan Lemune, The Autistic Gamer 89, Jacob Chavez, Leonardo Roberto Talavera Barocio, Dominic Antonio Enzo De Coco Margareti Gorlama. You can't fucking cancel me. I'll just do this bit more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Was not ready for that one. The banger. Suck my ass, Leo. <laughs> in space, right? You, gotta, you should have said in space after that. Amanda Tweed, Joe Has Mustache, Dustin Elkins. Nick Lowry, Serge Murillo, Matt Collins, Lucio Fulci's butt, Julie Lockwood, Kyle McDonald, Nicholas Walters, Daniel Perhaps, Jacob Fonsbeck, Patrick Farmer, Tony from Hack the Movies, C.B. Smith, Arlen Haro, John, still not sure if that's her, uh, for those that give a shit. <laughs> Still not sure about that. I don't know. I don't know if this joke is playing well. Somebody let me know. I, I, if it's not good, I'll stop. Until then, it's going to keep happening. Uh, and, and to top us off here, uh, our good friend, Jenna Fryer. Thank you so much. Uh, check out that Body Melt episode from last year if you want to know who we're talking about. If you haven't heard it, uh, thank you all for your support. So that's it. That's Leprechaun 4, colon, in space, from 1996, directed by Brian Trenchard-Smith. 
If you want some more good, bad, and god-awful movie goodness, head over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and follow us on all of your favorite social media and streaming platforms. You can also head on over to our Patreon page and sign up for the 2 5 or $10 tiers for monthly exclusive content, or drop by our merch store and grab yourself uh, some non-committal swag. Yeah, and for no money at all, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts to support your favorite show. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. And watch out for naked flames. Oh, as Shakespeare said, shit happens. 